First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace. Welcome back to First World Order Radio. Dr. Aline Mel Bay is in the house. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. Glad that y'all was able to stick with us. And I'm getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother L. Are you here? Peace, God. Peace, God. How you doing tonight? Doing wonderful, wonderful. How you doing, Moore? All right. Oh, I'm doing well, Moore. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to get this information going tonight. We got Brother Panic back, and he's going to destroy religion and make everyone become a magician. Brother Panic, are you in the house? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got you loud and Actually. clear. Actually, very clear, no echo this week. You know what That's I mean? Right. Sorry, yes. folks, but oh, that, that happened. we can't do nothing about Blog Talks Radio's technology, so you know you can't blame <laughs> us. But what we can do is keep it coming back week to week. You know what I mean? There's always mm-hmm. going to be somebody in the building on First World Radio, First World Order Radio, and, um, you know, as our vow... To you, we're gonna do what we do and give it to y'all in the most scientific way we can. Time play time is over. So this week we're gonna, as I'm straightening this stuff out, we're gonna deal with the difference, the line in the sand between the magician and religion. And um, let's see, I think we're almost ready to start, basically. Uh, so you're listening to First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We should be in the building. Um, if I'm not here every week, I'll be here close to every other week or so. But we'll be doing our thing, and here is where the games are going to stop. Anybody interested in dealing with us on this radio station needs to understand this shit is about actually doing things here. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories shit that works. Right. So in the interest of giving you shit that works, um um we gonna um, there's gonna be a lot of books I'm gonna give out tonight and a lot of informa- uh, a lot of hard information. Um, you know, I'm gonna try to keep these in one shows but there's just so much information. Uh, you know, part two is in order uh for the most part. 
I just want to give a couple of shout outs to a few people that are in the building. My boy Dots Mohai, well, I guess that's how you pronounce his name, is in the building. Uh, you know, a lot of people from my class are in the building, Bo, Kali, a few others, LA Blue Inc. A few faces chosen, you know, I don't want to forget nobody. My man King Cook is in the building. And if you don't know King Yes, Mr. Cook. <laughs> He's, he's also a Reiki master, thanks to Brother Aleem. And uh, mm-hmm. King Cook, you know, he does his spirit gateways. Um, I think he's going to put his uh, email up. I think it's King Cook Gateways at Gmail. I don't know. He'll put his up, but you can always catch him or me on Facebook. And we're going to talk about the Argon tonight because uh, uh, how important this can be a tool and where you can get the Argon. I'm going to go into detail when it. Uh, a little bit later on the show, but most of y'all guys already know Jerry Miller, and I'm in. I'm going to explain this in detail as we get into the lecture. So, unless a brother Lean has something to inject, I think we're ready to go. Yeah, we're ready to go. I have to be ready. All, All right, right, let's get it on. All right. So, the first thing I want to lay out so we understand this is what religion is. Um, And to put it in a line, religion, religion is nothing more than organized superstition. Religion is nothing more than organized superstition. Exactly. Now, if you understand this, as I'm, as, and I'm going to make you understand this, but if you can take this statement and, 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 and expand on it, you will find that you're not even suffering from a type of religion because if anyone's in this chat room, anyone's interested in this, you've already given up Christianity, but you haven't necessarily given up religion. You are just smart enough, conscious enough, something in your spirit told you that Jonah didn't stay in a whale's belly for three days. You just uh, weren't going for that, and that's spirit gateways at gmail.com for the gateways. That's for Sean Cook's gateways. Spirit gateways at gmail.com. Sorry about that. So email him there, and he'll explain to you what what these gateways are. I've talked about them before, but if you need to understand, if you need this gateway in your house, you make specialized gateways, and he has some other things coming down the pipe. So as we were saying, the uh, you may have given up these uh, foolish ideas, but the power of religion, the the agenda of religion, is more to keep you in a mindset or a framework or a way of thinking. So much so that no matter what you deal with, if you use the same technology of thinking, the same motif for thinking, the same thinking model, you will always be suffering you will always not, uh, I guess for a lack of a better way to say it, have have spiritual access to the information you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. So when it comes down to what we're studying, our conscience, our conscious ancient science, because we still have a religious motif, even though we think we have over Jesus and over a lot or whatever thing it is your parents made you worship first, even though we think we're over that, because we have the same framework, the same technology of thinking that has not been that has not been reorganized or reordered, um, we still have a religious mindset even with our conscious information. So therefore, when you hear, oh, we're talking like this and this is dangerous and the Illuminati is going to get us, and this person is going to get us, and, and we need to be quiet. Actually, you don't, and nothing happens, because what the powers that be do understand, the people that seek to control the masses do understand is, if you don't have the proper way of thinking, then no matter how ancient or powerful the, the information is, it's useless to you. Until you're able to reorder how you see these things, you cannot access or you cannot uh, make full use of your conscious information. Now, if you need, see, before there was such a thing as religion, 
the the mentality that set the stage for religious practice or religious slavery or religious manipulation or control to come into the game is superstition. When you start feeling or learned out of fear, routine, or ignorance, things that you're not supposed to do. This is actually opposite of the true magician, which is the scientist. So in this day and age, your goal as the magician is to be the scientist as opposed to um, this superstitious entity telling you what you can and cannot do or what is right or what is wrong. Half the time in my class, I'm trying to get people to realize they need to stop asking me if they can do it and start telling me what happened after they did it. Because right. as a scientist, that's your goal here, to experiment. I am no more skilled than you can be or possibly anyone else based upon. But my the difference between me and you is I tried all of this shit and can tell you results based upon a scientific mentality as opposed to, following a rule book, which is somebody else's rule, superstition, or religion. And these things were given to you. Now, we're going to go through some of my notes so we could probe this idea now that we laid it down a little bit more. Let me find some stuff I was looking at that I wrote down for you guys. All right, um... The power of the mind is truly limitless, for better or for worse. Therefore, it's very easy to to create conditions of poverty, misery, bad luck, illness, without being conscious that we're actually doing it. See, what we try to, what we think we're doing, is trying to uncover or tap into the power of the mind. But what we need to understand is you cannot divorce yourself from the power of the mind. So the conditions that are around you in terms of our poverty, in terms of our feeling like the underdog, in terms of um, this mass ignorance is because of the power of the mind, the power of the mind that was misused and you co-sign and agree with based upon routine and uh, basically just growing up like that. So we tend to think in that, if we get into this magic or this ancient thing, we start to open up the power of the mind. But what we, what, what I'm trying to explain to you is that the power of the mind has never wavered. It's just now so ignorant that it's creating these terrible surroundings, these, these, this misery, this feeling of lack, this feeling of emptiness and this ignorance that we call our everyday life that we think we're sifting through when we, when we, read a couple of conscious books. If we know if we understand that this power of this mind is constantly and always creating, all we need to do is give it what it needs to create our interpretation of what it is we feel is you know, our our true truth or our true destiny or however you want to say it. Now we need to understand this forms a vicious circle because what is believed to be true comes true. So the problem goes from bad to worse. Basically, if you believe it to be true, it's going to be true. And and because we uh, because of our belief, it only expands. So the more we talk about we hate Jesus, the more of that energy, if you will, of so-called hate Jesus becomes uh, prevalent in our lives. We have to uh, see. This is the key to understanding it. See the difference. There was a time I was running around saying, "Oh fuck Jesus," and I hate Jesus. But then when I started to read the Gnostic stuff and understood what the Christ energy was, you go beyond it. So it, I didn't expand on my hate for Jesus, therefore to run into more Christians and run into more shit that we complain about by expanding it or making it go from bad to worse. What I did was take the energy and reordered it because understanding the mind is powerful. The subconscious mind is what you need to actually uh the subconscious mind is constantly creating your reality. Therefore, you need to you need to give it a better reality, or and it's there to expand your reality. So the more we say we hate Christ, we hate, you know Jesus, this white man, and 
the more we talk about the Illuminati, because of your powerful mind, the more you expand and see more of this so-called mystery, uh, misery, the more you're able to change the attitude in your mind, you're able now to take that power back, which was his ancient intention for the Christ energy anyway. So you need to be able to halt the cycle by simply changing your mind or your attitude. We need to change our attitude. Our attitude, conscious or not, has not changed. It's still, there was a time where it was your slave master, and then when you felt a little bit more liberated, the slave master became the devil. You know, the white man is the devil. And then when you learned a little bit about, more about the devil, and that shit became played out to call him the devil, he just became this Illuminati, the power that be. So you, you, you never change your attitude, really. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's still this white, oppression, opposite, oppressive. You need to change your attitude. See, when I changed my attitude, what I understood was we created, we created them, and they're running the muck. And it's up to us to step back in our shoes and balance everything out. All of this Mayat and Patah father shit that you're talking about, you have to step up into that role and stop calling them these evil reptiles from other planets that came mm -hmm. down to dig gold and all the rest of these things. Because all it is is the same uh, uh, oppressive, this, this, this one controlling figure that just keeps changing the name for you. You get what I'm saying? So your attitude hasn't changed, therefore the subconscious mind hasn't changed. You just change one superstition for another superstition or another, uh, or from one religion to another religion. So from Jesus to Allah, from Allah to Buddha, from Buddha to Kuan Yin, from Kuan Yin to Oshun, it's the same worship mentality and nothing never really changes because you haven't changed the core of your thinking. And that's what you need to do as a magician or a scientist, change the core of your thinking as opposed to a religious mindset or a superstitious mindset. The Illuminati's out to get me. The masses out to get me. The devil's out to get me. The white man's out to get me. Mr. Establishment is out to get me. The CIA is out to get me. The FBI is out to get me. Vaccines are out to get me. Chemtrails are out to get me and you name the shit and the shit goes on, it's someone who's always out to get your ass. That's mm -hmm. what we need to give up. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Magicians ain't fucking with that bullshit. You get what I'm saying? Like well, you don't hear me having a whole dialogue about the foot that's in our ass. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Understand it. They said in the Will Smith movie, danger is real. Fear is this fear is an illusion, not real. And it's only the idea of a future that's never got here. That's what we fear the most. But danger is real. We need an aggressive reaction to danger. And the danger is not the white man. The danger is what you believe his power to be over you. That's our danger. Mm -hmm. And as the magician, as the magician, is your goal, first and foremost, primarily, to change your mind and attitude. And that's the core of changing reality because it all starts with the mind. The mind is all and the universe is mental. Mm -hmm. And this whole entire reality is based upon the black mind. You get what I'm saying? So what is the black mind thinking? The black mind is thinking in a religious motif or religious framework. So change your mind and you change your circumstances before any change can take place is necessarily to is necessary to discover the place of tranquility and then make this inhabit. See, we we haven't discovered this place of love or tranquility in us. We've only we're only probing this place of fear in us. What right. Beyonce is doing, what Jay Z is doing, what the what 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 they're gonna do to us next. They're gonna put us in fucking ovens and camps. And all of this stuff, we're we're probing this fear. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Exactly. We're expanding right. this fear. You get what I'm saying? Let me, let me, we're not making this. Please, Brother Panny. Yes, sir. Let me interject yes, sir. Because Will Smith, new movie that's out with him and his son Jaden in it. Mm -hmm. That's what the movie is about. Right. Fear. Mm -hmm. Elim right. Yes, sir. Fear. Mm -hmm. Eliminating fear. The, the, the Eliminating the, the, fear the, and the, becoming the, invisible. The, what what he was becoming a ghost of was his ego. 
was supposed exactly. to know. This, 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 he was becoming invisible to this world. You've heard the statement, I'm in it, but not of it. You get what I'm okay. saying? So he was in it. Right. It, 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 it was so much shit in there. It was a Horus. It was a Horus Osiris story. You get what I'm saying? Right. Him losing his legs, Osiris, Osiris being the Isis being the throne of so on and so. You go on and on and on. If, you know what I mean? Um, but mm-hmm. but primarily that movie was about releasing fear. You get what I'm saying? It was Same. probably right. one of the most popular. M Night Shyamalan always makes the corniest movies, but and he's always he's like a uh, uh, you know uh, what me and Tef used to call him something. Uh, uh, ABC Occultist, or uh, 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 My First Occultist book, or whatever it was. We used to call him something. And he's always like that. But the statement of fear, you give him saying, is actually is actually a, a, a byproduct that created superstition and out of a superstitious motif became religion. You give him saying, see, because people mm-hmm. are more hung up on the after effects of religion because their experience with religion has a name. Christianity, and you look at it as what your grandmother and mother made you made you do or didn't do when you weren't happy, when you wanted to go outside and play, and you were in church. But it's much more than that. It, it's much earlier than that. Now, you need to understand what we call traditional African systems, all of that Afrocentric movement, movement that you were trying to move back with, back to are systems that are still later day. And these later day systems, sorry to say it, are filled with superstition. Exactly. Superstition. Get over it. I know you think it's the most wonderful. But let me even take this back a little bit further. And these are words from Bobby Hemet. Bobby Hemet said, I was one of the early guys to get into metaphysics. And who I inherited was the Afrocentric crowd. This is what he was telling me. I said, oh, okay, I get it. He said John Henry Clark, Lisa Hilliard, uh, Ivan Van Sertema, and all the rest of these scholars, people jumped on their information, and they were taking trips to Egypt and Dr. Ben and so on and so forth. So it was a big Afrocentric movement. So when Bobby, Brother Bobby and Brother Phil started talking to folks about metaphysics and occult science, they were talking to Afrocentric people who were still in the in not dealing with science but dealing with building up pride, which was much necessary, much needed in in certain in certain information they were learning from Dr. Ben about their history, about what we've done as a people around the world. So as this metaphysics started to rise back with the black folks a lot of people would not or could not separate the difference, and it all got merged together. So in the metaphysics and the occult is really be talking about going, the word metaphysics means beyond the physical. Occult means hidden culture, which they're talking about the spiritual world. So there's a lot of contradictions that can happen when you have an Afrocentric mentality versus a metaphysical or a an occult mentality. You'll find these arguments, and they'll usually clash a lot. Some go along because you got to remember, occult and metaphysics were still alive in the traditions. But, like I said, it depends on the individual and people who were coming from a religious motif or, or a religious holocaust. And cannot free their mind when they go back to the Afrocentric no, thing and they, and they see these traditions there. It goes along with the conditioning they had as a Christian, as a whatever they were before. So when now when this metaphysics and the occult comes in, they try to put it under the same umbrella when actually what you're doing is trying to go beyond the culture. In our ancient science, there was still... Uh, 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 understanding of this And this was called the left hand path Versus the right hand path If you were dealing with the right hand path That means you did what everyone else In the village did You were expected to do what everyone else In the village did And play your role accordingly in the village And then if you were dealing with the left hand path 
even though you were in an African village and there were no white people around, you still was not going with the grain. You were doing something that the others were not doing for a different result. And this should be looked at, if you need an example, take the miniseries or the story about Shaka Zulu. That's a prime example of someone who took the left-hand path before white people actually got there. So what all the, if you look at the miniseries, what all the Africans were doing, they were doing African shit. He decides to make the spear longer, take off his sandals, shit like that. That was upsetting tradition, upsetting tradition, upsetting, upsetting routine. This is Shaka Zulu doing this. You get what I'm saying? And I'm sure any of you historian can give you other examples of somebody stepping out or coloring outside the line. This is the actions of the mindset of a scientist, a cultist, or a true metaphysician. Now, in this day and age, if you have stepped up to this plate and you're clear the systems that be, even you could even say in the African system, at least there was a chicken every pot, no one was starving at a certain point. Now, this, now walking the right-hand path clearly does not serve anyone here in any big way. The bi- biggest thing you could do is get an education and, and, and get a great job, and you still suffer through that. And as mm-hmm. black folks, we also know, even if there's ten people that suffer, uh, uh, doing doing great, if three people are suffering, we should not be, we, we are not content. We have failed. So it's in our interest, and this is supposed to be the story of conscious folks, to walk what they call the right-hand path. The right-hand path is also called the path of the hero. You are trying to interject something that wasn't done before to create or bring forth a new reality. You cannot do it with a religious mindset. And that mindset, and we're going to go on, we're going to get into it deeper, that mindset, again, is not necessarily destroyed because you just no longer believe in the white Jesus. You get what I'm saying? So, for instance, when it, 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 it amounts to this, when by the time you're a teenager or by the time the 70s, 80s kicked around. You remember when they started making black Santa clauses? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we're like, you know, this shit is, you know, it's much better now. There's a black Santa Claus. <laughs> all you did was, all you did was give up one fantasy for a fantasy more conducive <laughs> that looks like your kids. You know what I'm saying? Wrong. You gave up one fantasy for another. That's right. So, so just because you quit Jesus and replaced it with Horace, doesn't mean you don't have a problem, is what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying? Doesn't mean you still mind control. If your mentality, if your mentality is of the same, then, then you have done nothing. You are still under religion. Now, um, so what is magic? Magic, true magic, is the art of using control thoughts to produce a result, control thought to produce a result. So if someone tells you, see, I get this in my class. When we got to the altars last week, I I do classes on Saturday and Sunday. It's the same class. I make a day whatever convenient, so it's the same curriculum on each day. And on both days, someone said, are we allowed to put our altars in our rooms? I said, well, where have you heard you're not supposed to put our altars in our rooms? Both of them said, some lady on the Internet. Who's the lady? Some lady. She said, oh, no, no way, no how. I said, well, why not? She said, well, your ancestors, if you do an ancestral altar in your room and you want to fuck at something, the ancestors could see you. So I'm like, well, now let me get this straight. If you was fucking in the kitchen, somehow your ancestors came to see you. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever think this through? You know what I'm saying? You know, are we thinking this through? And they're sitting there in pause, you know, not really thinking it through. So this is because, again, let me say this again. So what is magic? True magic is the art of using controlled thought to produce a result. So are you using controlled thought or some lady from the Internet 
controlling your thoughts. Mm. So much so, you're not even thinking about what she said enough to say, wait a minute. Who questioning this? For instance, mm-hmm. yeah, it don't make no, no sense. No, it don't make sense. Right, yeah. it, it, right. Do you right? Do you even stop to say like this doesn't even make any sense or like? But not to mention the the four weeks of class. I'm telling you throughout class constantly. Be a scientist. Try it your own way. Do what you need to do. You need to tell me what happened. When it, what's the worst that can happen if you do it? You need to be saying, well, when I put it in my room, this is what happened. When I put it in that room, this is what happened. Mm-hmm. That's the conversation we need to be having. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Now, right. so let me see, and we're going to keep going and find another right. uh, page here. Now, the secret of successful magic works lies in controlling the mind. Because magic is the science of using the mind. That's it. Magic is the science of using your mind. The mind is all, and the universe is mental. You are trying, you, everything you're, and I show in my class, every single ritual, every single system, I bring it back to the mind. Because there's one and only th- there's one in, there's one and one only thing you're trying to do, get control of your divine mind that has been controlled. E- fuck the Illuminati, fuck the CIA, fuck antennas and shit all around the planet. What has been controlling your mind is your goddamn silly ass parents, mm-hmm. your silly ass grandmother. Those are the ones from day one that had your mind. And they're only a product of their silly ass parents and silly ass grandmother. Exactly. Sit up straight. Don't do that. Always say thank you. A man never does that. Look me in the eye. Shake my hand like that. Sit up straight. A lady crosses her legs. Da, 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 da. Then on and on and on to you you'll be wiping your ass with a shower curtain and you won't even know that you're doing it. <laughs> then I, I teach people in my class how they have to get over their parents. See, psychiatry now, because they're trying to get money, they link you to everything that's wrong with you, your mama did it, which they're right, which they're absolutely right. Your mama did it. Your mama is God. You get what I'm saying? See, look, listen, Africans figured it out. While y'all niggas are still warning around on Facebook talking about each one, teach one, nobody understood the science of that. The science of each one teach one and seeing all women as your mother and all men as your uncle because if you leave one woman to be your mother and see her as your only mother like we do in America, then the flaws of that woman become your next problem. But if you see more than one woman, a whole village of mothers, all the strengths from them can go into that one person for balance. So we would say each one teach one because all the strengths, like if you have one uncle and or all your uncles or, or one uncle who swings a hammer and your natural energy is to be an artist, you can't learn from him. But if you no. have a village of uncles who are artists, scholars, mathematicians, whatever you're going to find, you'll be able to find it in that one motif of man. So no one man or no one woman is responsible for you because every human is flawed. Every human is flawed. So we have a bunch of flawed individuals. That's my child. And I remember Spike Lee's movie. No one's going to tell me how to beat him. Um, but but uh, not, not even no one's going to tell me how to raise him, not even his father. You get what I'm saying? We had exactly. that mentality. And because of that mentality, the flaws, the, in, the, in, the, the inefficiency, the, 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 fit, the deficiency goes into each and one of these children here, which are us. And we hold on to things and don't even know. We're under mind control by them. Our perspective of the world is done by them. As you grow up to be the magician, your whole goal, your whole task is a journey within. It's called know thyself. So it's a journey within. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quest within. And some of the things you, the first things you ask yourself is why am I doing that? What attaches me to that? Where did I get that from? You're doing the psychi- you're doing your own psychiatry work. 
Psychiatrists today will tell you it's your mother, which is true, but then they'll try to get you to, to come to terms with that or get your mother to, to apologize for that. What they're mm-hmm. not trying to do, what the magician should be trying to do, is trying to release yourself or grow up beyond that. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Understand that your mother is nothing but a human being, and that's the path of forgiveness first. And that's the, the true forgive in forgiving something is not just saying she did that to me and I have to forgive and forget her. It's really having the compassion to see that she's nothing but a flawed human as well. Because as a magician, you understand that humanity has a natu- is flawed by its very existence. So once, you, once I started to understand my mother, she, she was only 18 when she had me. And I look at my stepson who's 18 and just, Fucking a mat. I shudder to think if that motherfucker was my father. My stepson, who's twenty, my father was twenty when he had me. Just the shit he's doing. I now it makes sense, which was the path of me saying he was just a man. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's not responsible no more. I'm now responsible as a magician because I am taking over my own mind. All right. So let me see. Let me get some more notes going here. Um, In today's world, we live with the pressure of stress. We are taught and shown from an early age that we must uh, sweat and strain to achieve results. So we're taught that primarily it's a physical work. And even in consciousness, we're taught that it's just this, this, these long amounts of books, these long lectures, these long things you have to do. But what people find, which I teach in my class, is not really, you're really actually relieving yourself from this bullshit world to let what's naturally in you start to, start to uh, emerge. You get what I'm saying? And you'll find it's easy, and you'll find most of the shit you were doing, like as a child, was actually the methodology or the thinking process that you need to, to, to attack your ancient information. They, they kept it simple or the most basic for you to understand and for you to be able to have access because they understood your nature was basic. You get what I'm saying? And this complexity later on is nothing more than a logical human, uh, how could you say, complication of something that, 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 that's designed to put you in a matrix. You get what I'm saying? Religion is designed to put you in a matrix. Mm-hmm. It is it's to make you, if you ever just read the Bible, it's almost, if you're not a metaphysician and don't understand the origin, it's incomprehensible bullshit. You get what I'm saying? Shem, but, 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 begat Fem, and Fem begat Shamrak, and Shamrak had Lisa Y, and you're like, what the fuck does that got to do with anything? But, but if you understand the code, in the, it, yes, it does, but then you will still then understand it's not the only book. There's ancient books. And really, a, the book concept is a later-day understanding of something that you're supposed to be finding within yourself. All right, let's see. Uh the conscious mind is immediately obvious, and it deals with the five senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Using these stimuli, the consciousness realizes and establishes so-called facts. So everything that you think is real is based upon your, just your five senses is what they're talking about. These facts are then passed on to the subconscious mind. So... Your subconscious mind, again, is what you're trying to impact. And as you, like I said, it's impacted through your five senses. And, and ultimately, the meditations, the chanting, uh, candle magic, the altars, uh, uh, crystals, all of these things were supposed to act, activate or make you realize senses that are beyond the five. And these things or these higher things that you're supposed to realize, are those higher frequencies are supposed to impact the subconscious mind 
so you can therefore, because the subconscious mind is what creates the reality around you. So if you're dealing with the higher, higher uh, uh, tools, then what's impacted in the subconscious mind is higher than the normal five everyday senses, which are stimulated for you, stimulated for you. Now you have people who understand that it's about impacting the subconscious mind, so they give you news, TV shows, especially they'll they'll kill t- uh, Trayvon, they'll beat up some little grand, they'll be they'll have the cops beat up grandmothers, all to stimulate the five senses hmm. to start repro to start programming the subconscious mind to create your reality for you. You give them saying mm-hmm. that's your religion, and that and as long as they attach their white power structure face to it, and you believe in cosign with them as the ultimate power, you are worshiping them still. We worship them now. There's more information in Facebook, which is the network we're dealing with, about their power or prowess than it is your own. You get what I'm saying? That means you still have Mm -hmm. a religious motif. Mm -hmm. Now, the facts are then passed on to the subconscious mind, which turns and acts on the information. Remember the picture. The conscious mind established the facts. The subconscious mind acts on the information and gets things done. Your subconscious mind is what gets things done. When you're dealing with the magic, what you're trying to do is inject the information or your intention into the subconscious mind because it is what creates your magical reality. It, if you say, if you say banana pudding is going to heal you and you can um, convince your subconscious mind of it, guess what? You, you've now just done a magical success. It's not that you dealt with Oshun and superstitiously gave her her 13 glasses of water and didn't do that at night. All of that shit is the precursor to religion. What it is is all of that stuff was supposed to, uh, you're supposed to do that stuff so your subconscious mind would be convinced that you're doing something right and just turn into superstition. It was all about what can convince your subconscious mind. Remember, somebody told you that fucking ginkgo biloba works, and you said it does. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You just really agree with that shit. How the fuck would you know? You know what I'm saying? Uh, there, it, yeah. There's no child who just takes that and goes, "Wow, I'm smarter." What was that that you gave me? It's like, no, you're supposed. You know, these Flintstones vitamins work because <laughs> you know what I'm saying because they're the Flintstones. Oh, okay. Well, let me get a Dino. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, remember there was a time in the 80s motherfuckers thought Geritol was the shit. Now, that dead ass shit don't work, you know what I'm saying? And it's because it's, it's, it's what you convince yourself of that makes it work, you know what I'm saying? Somebody was asking me, I was praying and the shit work. Of course, if you convince yourself, it will. You get what I'm saying? The idea is I'm just trying to use our ancient information because somewhere along the line they said, not only does this stuff work, it works faster and it's powerful and it's in your, it's in your, uh, 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 how can we say, it's, it's, in co- it's in collusion with you. It's, it, it works in harmony with you. So you're trying to deal with that. But then again, there's a lot of it you need to add on to, to form fit to your particular needs. Bobby Hemmings has been telling you that shit all the time. He'll say, well, I had a candle with a white Jesus on it. I just colored the face black and it was... El Cristo Negro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> meaning, meaning, meaning that's all in the game. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Exactly. That's all a part of the game. You get what I'm saying? It's what you can convince yourself of. I've said it before. Shit, Bobby Hemet is the nigga that can convince you of anything. Like, for years I was talking to him like, wait a minute, nigga. Like, one minute Chinese food is bad. The next minute is good, just depending on what the fuck we're talking about. I'm like, wait a minute, this shit is... Now, with a logical mind, I'm like, damn, nigga, that's a contradiction. Then it started to occur to me what was going on and how his mind worked. I said, oh, my God, this nigga makes himself always right. And ain't that what we <laughs> trying to do here? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. He's always right. He always <laughs> be shit in his favor. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I ate some Chinese food and threw up. See, that's good. 
because you had to clean out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ate some Chinese food and threw up. See, that's not right because uh, the MSD is fucking with the melanin. It depends on what you're doing. Like, I see, like, we watch movies. Yo, man. Yeah, the white man. Yeah. Just too bad they didn't use the original man to make this point. Then watch this, another movie, same fucking scenario. White man came in. He said, see, they had to use the white man to make it seem as if something new was happening out there. I'm like, God damn, nigga. So I'm like, I get it. I get it. You just, who, like, who, because really, we're stuck on, we are stuck on right and wrong. But what does right, that right. mean? This is an illusion. This isn't right. real. This is about your truth, your reality, whatever yeah. reality you create. So that's white religious. That's right and exact and, and <laughs> on point. And that happened. He wasn't fucking there. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck cares? It serves you not. What are you doing now? And when you do shit, you ever see a motherfucker lie so much, he believed his own fucking lie? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He believed his own lie. He's motherfucking. You like, I know that motherfucker is lying because I was there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the nigga's so convinced. The nigga's so convinced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I used to hang out with Curtis Blow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that. like, what? You, nigga, you ain't even the same age range as Curtis Blow. And me and Curtis Blow, we used to. You know how he got that name? We was. On cocaine together. <laughs> what? Where you get this story from? And but but in his mind that shit is real. I, I know you told a lie so much that you forget that you that you actually made this shit up. So yeah, you, it's like you tell the these all the brains, the brains. Yeah, that's right. These all the brains. I made that. He stole that from me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> so like, uh, so like, uh, you, the the idea is, you need to question what we call reality. You know, see, you ever notice how black folks, when it's working for them, is spiritual. When it's not working for them, well, this is just an illusion anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this isn't real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, look, man, um, you know, pick something. And so the idea is this isn't real. This just is an illusion. And every single thing down here is a representation of something greater. So a rose isn't just a rose. It's a representation of something greater. All of that has been, uh, if you look at the whole scheme of magic that Africans have been dealing with, we already figured that out. What mm -hmm. symbol means what? What what means what? You get what I'm saying? So therefore, and then we already figured out that everything that could possibly be in nature, possibly be in symbology, is just the unfolding of your mind. There is nothing in existence outside of your mind. Nothing. No substance. No, there's nothing that you cannot obtain with your own mind. If you need a tool for it, it's because you fell off. <laughs> and, the, and, 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 and but the good news is, if you do the work, you can be put back on. It's very easy. It's mm -hmm. it's not a gift. It is something. This this shit is your birthright. You get what I'm saying? This is your birthright. You get what I'm saying? And we need to get into it hard. And we and first thing we need to understand, like I said, scientists. We need to start becoming scientists. And stop becoming less philosophers, less dispensers, dispensers of useless repeat information. We need to become active in what we do. We need to understand how to activate what we do. We need to understand our true enemy is our own mind. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the only thing that's given to you by the white man is stimuli of the five senses, and you co-sign with the rest because he ain't this shit to you that you ain't co-signed and believe in. If he can make you believe it, then it becomes real. That's what we're talking about here. He made you believe that there's a fucking, that Beyonce's in the Illuminati. And you niggas believe that shit. Just because Jay-Z <laughs> named his fucking record label Rockefeller 
all of a sudden, he's one of the third. The shit is based upon bloodlines. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jay-Z said it once, and he only said it once because he's trying to sell records. He said, Jay-Z said this, Illuminati, I'm a young Negro from the projects. How could this even be true? You know what I'm saying? How could this even be fathomable? Aline did a classic video. I don't know if it's on YouTube or you can get it from Aline. 13 no, Families of the Illuminati. Is not? No. Okay, then you need to get it from Aline. 13 Families of the Illuminati, where he goes through all the, the original 13 families of the Illuminati. It's a bloodline thing. It's not something you join up like the Boy Scouts. You can't, you, you can't wrap your way into the Illuminati. No, sir. I don't care how hot your records are. And he goes through the, the families. Reynolds Rap is an Illuminati family. The Kennedys, uh, the Merovingian family. And, you know, he goes through all 13 of, of these, these friends, the, the uh, Vanderbilts. That's an Illuminati family. You get what I'm saying? And these motherfuckers are power brokers. And even that shit is over. They, they're they fighting between each other, killing each other, don't know which direction to go. It's not like they popping. It's not like they're doing something that's hot anyway. You get what I'm saying? You're so behind on that Illuminati shit. It, 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 it's pathetic. The easiest way to to to, especially for Americans with your short attention spans, is just to make it popular. The hot, they call it hiding it in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Hiding it in plain sight. So what they're really doing or really trying to accomplish, believe you me, you will never see that on YouTube. The Illuminati can be eaten at your dinner table when you wouldn't even fucking know it. Before exactly. moving on to unlimited power of the subconscious mind, we ought to spend some time looking at what we what we call facts. What we call facts. Since your birth, much of what you know has been given to you by someone else. Your parents, your teacher, society, television, and so on. You have been given these facts. Your subconscious mind has been acting on these facts ever since. From now on, You must question these facts to see if they are indeed true, or even important, or more important, or if they are true for you. So your first, Mm -hmm. your first goal in a magical mindset is to question what it is you think and see in this world. Half of what I see repeated on YouTube is some shit niggas is co-signing with that somebody else said. Yeah, we got to save black kids. We got to save black kids. Yeah, we got to save the grandmothers. Yeah, black people say that. So, yeah, I guess we do have to save the babies and the grandmothers. And and we need more black fathers. Yeah, yeah, black <laughs> people say that. We need more black fathers. You get what I'm saying? So we we notice there's routines and, and, and mantras and shit we say, but but is that shit true for you? Let's, let, I mean, you need to be not, – not, don't be real with me. But, yeah, panic because the babies are so important – no, you need to sit down and go, how much do you really like these fucking babies? You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen them, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's sitting in some situations where you go, why don't you just shut that motherfucker up? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. you sitting in an in a, in a office. You ain't like, oh, look at the babies crying. You're like, shut that motherfucker up for a choke the shit out of you. Where's the father at? You know what I'm saying? It ain't no, oh, look at the The angel is crying and... The angel shit on itself. I'm saying, oh, we need to save the baby. Who's going to wipe the angel's ass? <laughs> this, this angel from heaven. You know what I'm saying? Shit. You know what I mean? Take a big green shit in a diaper. Oh, hotel. You blind motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, now, now, don't get me wrong. We love our kids. And there's kids around us that we love and want to save. But I'm talking about, and I'm doing air quotes, the kids. Who the fuck are the kids? You get what I'm saying? You need to save your kids. We need to save the grown-ups. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the grown-ups are all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, of course, you know, there's no kid in need. I'm going to leave starving. There's no kid I'm going to, you know what I mean, disrespect or talk down to. That's that's folly. That's stupid. You just got to be cool and have an agenda for that. But just these random 
faceless kids as a subject is nothing more than mind control. You get what I'm saying? These these faceless grandmothers, you know, nothing more than mind control. You know what I'm saying? Help your grandmother. Because everybody, you know what I'm saying, help your grandmother. If you help your grandmother, then there will be, if every because every, every grandmother got grandkids, there will be no hurting grandmothers. So you ain't got to help the grandmothers, help your grandmother. You ain't got to help the kids, help your fucking kids. And any kids that come in your cipher that you have a personal connection with. That ain't that hard. Just these random kids, you know what I'm saying? The power of the mind is limitless, for better or for worse. Therefore, it's very, uh, therefore it is very easy to create conditions of poverty, bad luck, illness, without being consciously aware of doing it. You so just like I said before, just because of the power of the mind, it you can create these things without even being aware that you're the one creating your poverty, you're the one creating your illness, you're the one creating this oppression, this underdog mentality. It's us. You don't get to tell me you got the divine mind of Mayat and Pata and Oshun and all the rest of them, and then somebody else is doing something to your ass. That's an oxymoron. You get what I'm saying? Mm. That's an oxymoron. You get what I'm saying? I am the original man. I am the original woman. I am the goddess. I'm the great mother. I'm this. You know what I'm saying? But I got to go to work on Tuesday, and there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? I got the rail. They're going to do this. None of the, the Illuminati's coming. They're going to put us in ovens. Mm. And ain't nothing we can do about it. That's an yeah. oxymoron. That means... That's, see, that's another way of telling me you subconsciously do not believe what you consciously keep saying. You mm-hmm. have penetrated the subconscious mind to create the reality of being my eye. Just because you change your name ain't doing it. Just because you change your name, the pata ain't doing it. You have to become that thing. And to become that thing, it starts with reprogramming, reordering the subconscious mind, God damn it. So I know it's not happening because you cannot name yourself Pata and talk about the prowess of the Illuminati, the reptilians, and the Merovingian family, whatever the fuck it is that's on your mind. Nobody's talking about <laughs> breakthroughs. Nobody's talking about breakthroughs. And then when they're even talking about our stuff, you're talking about the limits on our shit. You can't do that. Oh, the worst ever, these little fucking Polaro motherfuckers. The worst ever. The worst ever. They get stuck in that shit, get all cut up on their ass, and they think they have done something that's so fucking genius. You get them saying, no, you're nothing but an extension of a religion and a superstition. You don't want to go fucking with them powers, panic. It's old news. I'm told I don't want to go fucking with them. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're over that now. You get them saying, we need to understand the difference between superstition Tradition and, and, and dealing with spirits. Spirits are nothing more than energy. Nothing yeah. more than energy. You yeah. give them a name, a color, a day of the week, or whatever it is you do as a method for accessing the energy. When you start giving it rules, you're talking about your human problems. Oh, you can't do that, and you can't do this, and the powers are going to fuck you up. This, get the fuck out of here. It's your own su- superstition. It's your own belief system that's fucking, mm-hmm. fucking with you. Exactly. It's your own mind. You fucked up off Apollos because you believe that they can fuck you up. That's the trick here, nigga. <laughs> Abracadabra, nigga. That's the trick. <laughs> You're fucked up off Apollos because you believe that you can fuck up, that they can fuck you up. Ta-da! <laughs> now, I just pulled the rabbit out of the hat. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that is some David Blaine shit you just seen right there. If you understand and you go, you're you not scared and you go into this shit, you'll realize you're only dealing with, with energy. What you're, what, you're falling, what you're falling into is later-day traditions. See, these things were created in, by shamans to give to people who were in a semi- they were in the traditional cultural setting, which was the precursor for religion, and later became a superstitious setting. So you're building upon something that's later day from people with their own superstitions. But see, who did who weren't under the superstitions was the motherfucking shamans. 
because they're the ones who dished it out. What I'm calling for is the shamans, the scientists. You give them saying before before traditions there was science. There was no tradition like that in Egypt. The motherfuckers were scientists, even though they were cultural systems and so on and so forth. But when they dealt with the temples, they were dealing with the science. Mm-hmm. So we in a day and age where the science is back in order. We are in the golden age. This is that time. You have no time to be worrying about if the power is going to fuck you up. Africa dabber, nigga, get over it. You've got to let it go. You've got to let it go, nigga. Let it go. Mad at Oshun because she, Oshun is mad at me. Nigga, that don't make no sense. If it's just energy, that's like saying the electricity in my wall is mad at me. Well, you shouldn't have stuck a fork in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's shit you don't do, but if you just plug it in, you get what I'm saying? If you just plug it in, how could fucking electricity be mad at you? You know what I'm saying? Are you really, you know what I'm saying? You see, the more studied you are, the more ridiculous this shit starts to sound. So when I hear people, I just hear lack of study. Lack of study with folks. You know what I'm saying? I just hear lack of study. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my electricity is mad at me, so, because I didn't put out no water. Like, come on now. You're going to have to go past that. Now, I'm not caught. For people who are in this tradition, living in them houses and, and, and following this and grew up this way, I'm not even challenging you. I say do what you do. I say, in, in fact, enjoy what you do because your mind, your mind and I might be able to get to this because there's a book on candle magic where I'll make that point. Your mind, I'm not even trying to challenge you. Whatever works for you because it's your subconscious mind, it works. I'm talking to those people on the fence that are really trying to learn this and not bullshit. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. That's number one. Yeah. Nothing to fear but fear itself. All right, let's see what else we've got. Uh, here we go. Uh, let me see. Talked about this. All right, let me go on another page. Nothing to fear but damn fear itself. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, let me see. The only undesirable influence ever likely to invade your temple are ones brought by by in by superstitious belief and by other people. Superstition should never be a part of magic, as it will turn the whole process into shambles. Yes, it will. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, again, when I question people, well, where did you get that from? Pat, should we do this? Should we do this? Where did you get that from? It's always some fucking body on YouTube. Something somebody said to them. I'm like, where does this person get the power over you? Well, they get the power is because naturally you're scared. So if they say something that goes in collusion with your fear... Mm-hmm. It seems to it seems to ring true with you. What I'm saying to you and why you question me is because I'm telling you to be fearless. I'm telling you, guess what? You can get with these Apollos. See, at the core, what I'm saying is, don't be scared, nigga. That's what I'm saying. And when you mm-hmm. say, but panic, that ain't right. In 1942, this happened to Carlos Montenegro. <laughs> All I hear is this. You scared, motherfucker. You scared. <laughs> Doing it and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? That's what I hear. I don't hear no, it, 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 this shit happened and then, let, come on, because it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? I tapped into all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And I tapped niggas into all of this shit. And ain't nobody walking around here crippled. Ain't nobody walking around here, I'm fucked up, panic, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Anybody I see... Everybody, you know, thank you for that panic. You fucked me up. Every time I'm giving somebody motherfucker, any time niggas come, they was already fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I'm usually meeting the fucked up motherfuckers. Do that and rescuing their asses with this shit. You get what I'm saying? One of the most uh, powerful magical tools right now, I didn't get a chance to get it off, is Organite. Organite, organite, organite. And it is very hard to get. It is very expensive to get. But the good news is this. We have a brother who makes this, and he sells it. No other way to express uh, express it but cheap, goddammit. Very doable. His name is Jerry Miller. You can contact him on Facebook, 
If you can't, if you don't have a Facebook, uh, hit me up, and I'll give you make sure you have information. You can hit me at panicpack at hotmail dot com. He has organized for your ass pyramids, pendants. Uh, there's there's not. I mean, you got to see this amazing shit he's creating. Now, so I it's very important. Organize will look is one of those things that taps into the quarks and it taps into the quantum world. So for your work. You want to get into this organizer. So Jerry Miller, Jerry Miller, Jerry Miller is that guy right now. He is on Facebook. Most of you know him. If you don't know him, find out. I'll give you the link to his page. He's got plenty of pictures and shit up. And like I said, he's to, he's he's not just told me. He's shown me. <laughs> in Europe, they want his shit. These white folks is up on this organizer, and they pay in top dollar for this shit. And I've gone – now, I've – Handed out flyers at his like he'll whenever he does an event sometimes he'll invite me if I'm doing the the lecture so I'll hand out flyers I sit there I see niggas come and, and pick that shit up like it's jewelry I don't know and he'll explain I see him explain all day to black folks out of his love and then I see white people come and just buy that shit because they know they go oh good God Almighty and just buy this shit because they already know what it is while you niggas are still looking for onk pieces you get what I'm saying. <laughs> But the black people who know, know, organize it. You know what I'm saying? It's probably one of the most key things you can use in the golden age. Him, his wife, they do channel, and they were telling me about channels they got, which I know to be correctly and on point. So I went to their house, stood in front of their altars. All them altars started talking about, this is, this is the wave of the future, nigga. It is not even as important as it's going to get now. You must have organized in your house. I have it all over my house from Jerry. I suggest you guys do the same thing. Get with him. It is surprisingly cheap and surprisingly important, and there's story after story after story after story of the lives that has changed. I wanted to get that in. And, of course, while we doing our commercial, panicpack at hotmail.com. I have a whole new list. I know I always say that, but I got new packs on the list. New readings on the list, all sorts of shit on the list. I'm finishing up my June's class cycle. We're about to start sometime in July. Now is the time to get into classes. If you don't know about these classes, you're missing out. The classes are online. You can do them on Skype from the, from your home. They are life-changing classes. You do not have to take my word for it. If you email me in the, in the information pack that I send you, I, you will see – uh, email listing of people who took the class where you can ask them directly. You can ask them directly what the class has done for them. And you will find out for yourself how powerful this class is. That class is what most of my energy is in now. It is the shit to do. So please get in the class. Email me about class, panicpack at hotmail.com. And of course, the herb packs are the pineal. Never failed. We've been four years strong with that. This shit is working, and, I, and, of course, there's so many orders. I know people don't get them quick. This is not Amazon.com. But, no, if you pay your money, you will get your product. I'm sending out a bunch of shit this week, and it's, if, it, it, it's never too late, but it's always on time. That's not right. So uh, are we going to keep going with the lecture, but panic pack at Hotmail.com. And remember to hit Dr. Lean Bay up at drleanlbay.com, and at the very least, you know, he has classes, he has a whole wealth of shit he's been doing for many years, he's not a new, he's not a, he's not a new guy, he's been around, he's a, he's a seasoned lecturer, but if nothing else, I think if you still have an issue with the Illuminati, you may want to go on and get that uh, Illuminati tape that Elise has done, it will, fi- it will kind of clear up for you what the Illuminati is, no one seems to know, and why there could not be a Beyonce or Jay-Z in the Illuminati. (laughs) All right. So magic is not a social get-together or a hobby. It is a way of life. Magic is not a social get-together or a hobby. It is a way of life. Understand this. All of these fucking group sessions is not magic. A group session is nothing but a prayer session. Simple as that. White folks, you'll find in most white books, white folks talk about these group sessions because 
They don't have enough melanin. So the more grouping of them for one goal, that's why they have so much ceremonial magic, because the grouping for them for one goal kind of helps their agenda. So that's why they're so stringent, so so to the point where everyone dressed the same, everyone wear this cologne, everyone do this on this day, everyone wear these colored drawers or no drawers, because what they're trying to do is create one mind to add up to your one black mind in terms of power. So magic is not a social get-together. Magic is not a social get-together. It's not a hobby. It's a way of life. You need to be, in the way of life they're talking about, is how you reorder your thinking, how everything comes into you in your subconscious mind now takes over the reality of what your five senses and your conscious mind was doing, what your conscious mind was doing. So now, so what your conscious everyday thinking mind does, which is limited, to your humanity and five senses as programming the subconscious mind, your magical mind, and magic, for lack of a better word, because this is just really your own thoughts, your magic, magical mind, or your, your and, and filled with your ancient information, your ancient methodology, your agenda is now running your reality. You're now programming your subconscious mind with more than the five senses, which are dictated for you, by society, parents, teachers, and, and, and Channel 2 News and YouTube, it is actually now being programmed by you. That's what I talked about when I talked about Bobby Hammett just saying one thing after another after another because he figured to get off the five senses and let his mind, because what's this contradiction when nothing is real? You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So there's no contradiction. All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, let's go to this. All right. Let me put the record straight once and for all. There's no such thing. And let, you know, let me let me get this down for all you Palo and good versus evil people. All right, because that seems to be another thing, which is nothing but a motif of religion. There's mm-hmm. no such thing as good or evil. That's a that's a mo. When you when this concept comes into anything, that means you have a religious mindset. Period. Anything. It's all about your intentions, and evil or good is an interpretation based upon the people involved. That's it. Mm-hmm. So there is no such thing as black or white magic. First, there is energy, which is never ending, abundant and given freely. It is neither positive nor negative. Second. Second, there is you, and you have the right to use this energy. Third, there is free choice in the way in which we choose to use the energy, use it destructively, negative, negatively, constructively, or positively. So basically, there's no definition of good or bad. Oshun to be good or bad. You get what I'm saying? So you can use the energy of Oshun to destroy someone's love or build someone's love. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You could use the energy of Obatulat to build someone's intellect and mind power or destroy someone's intellect and mind power. You get what I'm saying? It's up to you how you use the energy. It represents electricity. The same way you plug your appliances into the wall and that electricity has a new definition based upon the appliance that you plugged into it is the same thing in your attention. So you could use your iron to iron your clothes, or to burn penny from good times. You get what I'm saying? But it's the same iron. You get what I'm saying? It's the same iron. Now, energy conforms to patterns, and the understanding and the use of these patterns is called magic. So energy has patterns. So Oshun has a pattern. We're just calling it love. Ogun has a pattern. We're just calling it work or war. You get what I'm saying? Kuan Yin has a pattern. We just call it compassion. You get what I'm saying? Or even better yet, compassion has a pattern. We're just calling it Kuan Yin. Love has a pattern. We're just calling it Oshun. You get what I'm saying? So these names of deities came later, only later or second to the pattern of energy. The 
energy is too complex to call love is too complex to say to 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 to, to grasp and control it. Is it the love for your child, love for your mother, love for your grandmother, love for mankind? Did love have so many different in love? So when you say Oshun, when you give it to a character, a day, a name, symbols, a look, a disposition, a story, which is mythology, you then take this pattern of love and, and, and make it usable to the masses of people who may not be able to deal with the complexity of just the word love. So you take something that's complex, like the word love, and then you simplify it through the deity. So the characteristics of the deity, the, the water, the honey, the, the, the peacock, the this and that, are all symbols that get you closer to the pattern of love. The real story is supposed to be love for yourself. Now, Later day, in tradition, these patterns or this energy that was only supposed to describe love, and because we give it a character or a personality through the mythology, we then find ways through fear, Mm -hmm. through through superstition, to now cross this deity. Oh, Oshun is mad at you. Oshun is... And this is not just in America, because there's some shit voodoo something on... uh, it was on um uh it's on Netflix. I can't remember Voodoo something uh, or no uh mysterious something. I can't even remember. But in it one of the stories was there's a fisherman, fish god and they're doing all these rituals to the fish god. Long story short, this nigga get bust upside his fucking head with blood's coming out for this deity in possession while he's in possession. And then the shaman is sucking the blood out of this motherfucker's head so my this shit is divine. When the dude, when the dude finally comes the fuck up, after, come, wakes up out of this shit after rolling around, they said, well, what's the end result? I didn't make him mad, and now I get more fish. Hmm. I'm like, I'm like, y'all, I like, see, y'all following the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all following the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all following the wrong shit. And, and most mm-hmm. and people who was watching was like, yo, that shit was hot because he was possessed. It's hot in comparison to what you know as someone who is just in church dancing to an organ. Mm-hmm. But if you isolate the incident, it's just because it's African, he's in a village busting himself upside the head, bleeding for an invisible deity for fish. <laughs> That's terrible. You get what I'm saying? But if you can, if you compare it, to, it, it if you compare it to your mom's old. church hat, right? It, if you compare it to your uh huh, go brother, and going fishing, right? Going fishing, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm saying, get a net, nigga. Get a net. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, like if you compare this shit to your mom's church hat, you know what I'm saying? This is the fun. Same, same show. Another story, and people probably remember this because it's on YouTube. Um, little black girl says her whole family are priests, shamans, and channelers. She says, no, I want to go to school, Pop. So he's <laughs> like, no, you need your destiny. No, I want to go to school. He said, when she's in school, these deities are confusing her. She's in school going, nah, 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 cause they wouldn't let her <laughs> learn. So she said, fuck exactly. it, I got to do this. So the ritual, badass. Like now, see if you see this, you'll be like, "Oh my God, magic is real!" But no one's really seeing what just happened here. They they get the old the old chicks of the village. They go into their shit. They busting the shit down, and like clockwork, she just goes unconscious. They say for three days she'll be unconscious. We're gonna wrap her in this shroud. The whole Jesus story. Put it in the cave. Oh, my God, where did we hear this before? In three days, she'll be resurrected. Three days later, they came back, started doing this dance. (laughs) Boom, she comes out of it. Now, you watching this shit, you're like, this is magical. Then they said, she basically died. The deity is born in her, and she's going to take care of the village and all of that kind of shit. Now, they said, we'll know if it's her if she's doing the dance. They put that beat on, and she freaked it. Boom, eh, eh, boom, eh. She was like, 
Woo! She was like doing the shoulders. She was high. It wasn't even no African shit. That shit was like a dance, like from the Latin quarters or some shit. <laughs> Union Square. She's like live in Union Square. And um, <laughs> she's the oh, it's, it's on. She's done, and it, shit is popping. It's cracking. You know what I'm saying? She was dancing she's like she was at Magic City. You know what I'm saying? She was dancing she's like she's at Magic City. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Players Club, Diamond, and knew the shit. Now I'm saying, and now it looked hot, looked magical. It's better than anything you've ever seen. Ooh la la, ooh wee wee. But remember, she didn't want to do this shit. She had no path. Them deities took her ass over. Can the deities do that? Yeah, because that's what the culture co-signed with. Mm-hmm. All of that shit that's happening to you or can possibly happen to you with a deity is based upon you co-signing with great God, goddess, divine mind. So how could you be a god and goddess and then some other god just take you over and just have its way with you. Doesn't make no sense unless you agree to that shit. You get what I'm right. saying? Right. So now now the difference with the African culture is they're systematically in a culture or in an agreement systematically as a people with a certain amount of deities. So as a people, them deities have power over the people. We are no longer in that situation. We're the best of the best. That's why we're here. We're the scientific minds. That's why we're in America, because we're the ones. So we're not here to do what the Africans were doing. We did it already. We're mm-hmm. here to take it to the next level. The next level was up off of this. Come on, man. We need to get this shit together. So... <laughs> It's the intention which matters. If you normally use energy for destructive ends, you will use the same energy. Um, if, we, uh, if you normally use energy for destructive ends, you will use the same energy as you will if you use for constructive ends. So the same Oshun for destruction will be the same Oshun for construction. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For instance, here's a breakthrough. You will hear Kali. You know, oh, Kali mine, Kali the death, Kali does this, and Kali will kick your ass, and Kali, Kali, Kali. But then when you get these Hindu tapes and, and chants, oh, great mother Kali the wonderful. There's always this contradiction as her, as this this wonderful great mother, but then this ass whipper. So, so on the regular science, I was able to break this down. I did a blog talk show that her, on Earth, she is terrible in power because she, 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 she wipes out the eight demons, the ignorance, basically humanity. But in the heavens, she's the great cosmic mother. So this is the same energy but two different aspects. Now, when I worked for a, doing the computer shit, we had, you know, before they kicked us all out, they had the Indian niggas, the niggas from India come over. We had to train them niggas to take our jobs. <laughs> and I already did some magical shit where I had a whole section to myself. Nobody was there. So naturally, they sat them niggas behind us. Now, them niggas is straight from India. So they just could not believe the shit that I had going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm dropping the Hindu deities on them. Yeah, I know about this, 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 this. Uh, you this one, you that one, you this one, you that one. So I'm talking to one of the dudes. And I was like, you a Hanneman nigga. He said, yo, that's all I do my pooges to, Hanneman. <laughs> and this nigga was like, yo. He was saying, whenever you want to come to India, you come and stay at my crib. He said, I will show you some of the illest temples. He was saying, there's a temple that leans. If you're standing outside, you lean. But if you walk outside, then everything looks straight up. He said, there's a temple that floods every day. At four, then recedes. Niggas going and pray. He was telling me about all these fucking temples that they cannot explain in India. And one of the dudes came down. He just started talking. He said, yo, Kali, he said, if you, you do her pujas, which is like the prayers to her, you get the great mother, divine, the nurturing. He said, but if you do her pujas backwards, you can call her wrath on motherfuckers. I was like, shit, that explains so much. But see, now understand, one energy, your intention makes the difference. You get what I'm saying? One energy. So your 
your so the Apollos aren't bad or good. It's because you it's how you feel about them. You get what I'm saying? You don't need to get into no fucking traditional system that's antiquated and don't even work for the people who created it no more. The people who created all that shit are Christians now. Nigeria <laughs> is Christian, you silly motherfucking Oshun followers. Exactly. Yes, sir. And they're fucking avid Christians. Give them saying they're the worst case scenario. And if they're not Christians, do you know what they are? Muslims. You get what I'm saying? Big One time. or the other. So that shit that they're doing over there that you're trying to copy off of and keep fucking true is a fucking fantasy. They gave it up. You get what I'm saying? Because it no longer works for them as a tradition. But the energy doesn't change. If you deal with Oshun as the energy pattern as opposed to a fucking personality whose ass you must kiss, then you're doing a different thing. You get what I'm saying? Stop kissing these deities' asses and then calling yourself God. You don't deserve the title. You don't deserve the title. Call yourself what you are, Sherman, if you're going to kiss their ass. You know what I'm saying? Fucking... (laughs) Fantasia, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Call yourself what you are. Stop calling yourself my yacht and bata, and then you're going to kiss. Well, Pat, you can't do that. Oshun's going to be like, shit, nigga. I had twosomes with Oshun a long time ago. She's old. She's old pussy. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> old pussy. Oh, not Oshun. Yes, she's old pussy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh fucking scared of these scared of these motherfuckers then I'm God later. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> saying play spades with Osiris, you know what I'm saying? And that nigga's always cutting throat. You know what I'm saying? You crazy. Whoa boy, these people. So if you normally use energy for destructive ends, you will use the same energy for constructed for construction. It's not mm-hmm. it's not different. You know what I'm saying? Destruction could be called black, construction could be called white. But even this is not accurate. Uh, what's right for one person may not be right for another. If it's right. your choice, and you you must make it. Forget all about black and white, good and evil, and so on. Think about choice and intention. Let that be your guide. Choice and intention should be your guide. If you feel in your heart of hearts that the Apollos are so powerful and it could tear you up, you need to tell me anything in your mind that says that won't be true for you. Why wouldn't that be true for you? What, what, what are you coming to me for to convince you of something that you already convinced yourself of? I'm talking to people who's trying to do something. I'm not trying to change the mind of someone who already believes that you should not fuck with Paulo. Folly for me to do such a thing. You get what I'm saying? Have fun at it. I'm talking to the people who are on the fence and trying to learn some shit that is going to take them to the next level. Mm-hmm. The ones who are not dealing with fear or as much fear as someone who's already conditioned by fear, routine, religion, and superstition. Superstition. Now, all right, where are we at? Let me see. Hey, let's see what this is. All right. Um, <clears throat> magic is the science of using and understanding the power of the subconscious mind to achieve the desired results, a physical result. So magic, in a nutshell, is all about the subconscious mind, the end. That's it. Anything you can convince yourself subconsciously is, is the true reality. Your conscious mind is nothing but your ego. It will die. It isn't real. It, 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 it is stimulated, gassed up, souped up, and manipulated by anything around it, anything, uh, any smell around it, you smell a fucking hamburger, you want that. It is manipulated easy. You see some pussy, you want that. You know what I'm saying? By the five senses. Discipline. <laughs> Discipline that it takes to, to use ancient information, ancient agenda, or your, or your new agenda with ancient science to manipulate the subconscious mind is magic. You will not break into the realm of magic using fear, what the powers can do. What this, uh, you, you need to take the ass out of all of these deities. Mm-hmm. Stop being scared of them. They are nothing but energy. They are powerful energy, but none more powerful than what you are. 
You get what I'm saying? We need to stop underestimating ourselves. Stop underestimating ourselves as scientists. Yeah. Now, um, it is of little use to spend a lot of time each day in a profound state of meditation than to fill and fill up your notebooks with astral experience and interesting information and do not use it. Meditate by all means, but meditate for a purpose and an end product. See, in other words, you everything you do, you're trying to get a physical result, a physical result. Most people are meditating just to say, yeah, I was meditating, I was in the zone. Uh-uh. Ask yourself questions, come out with answers. That's why the fuck you meditate. And... Um, with all real magic, there has to be a result, crowded result. Crowded notebooks may well flatter the ego, but they do not solve problems. They create them. The mm-hmm. word create is, a, uh, is, is vitality and impo- is vital and vitally important to magic. The whole idea is to create using power. Directing power by using the mind in a creative manner is really, is really magic. So directing your power through a creative through a creative medium in your mind is power. You're not directing power talking about the next man's power or talking about the concepts of power. You're still not accessing the power. You need to start directing the power in your mind, and that's really by 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 actually relieving yourself of the conscious blocks that shut you down. Scaredy cat shit. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Routine shit. What you used to, that least trodden path shit. What your mama told you. Routine. Tradition. What the next nigga did, you did. So I guess it's safe. He's got an unk, I got an unk. He's got a kofi, I got a kofi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get off of that shit. Get in your own shit. Creation itself creates. So, um, so do we. Usually without knowing it. To become proficient at magic means that you do um, that you do know what you are creating. See, we don't know what we're creating by saying, let's say Jay Z is in the Illuminati, let's say Beyonce is in the Illuminati, and Baphomet is her fucking father. What's that going to do for you? And by fucking you, by you involved in it, what does it create for you? Exactly. So let's say they got chemtrails; they're going to shut down the. Su- they're going to make you drink sewer water. They're going to, you're going to be drinking their urine. Who the fuck knows what they're going to do? But by you vibrating on the thought, by you vibrating on the thought, you know what I'm saying, what does it create for you? That's the question. What are you creating by talking about this shit every day? What are you creating on Facebook by trying to get information, even if you're not talking about them, by just talking about your information instead of utilizing your information or at least admitting the truth is that you don't know how to utilize it and you mm-hmm. and you want the tools to know how to utilize it, that's what you start creating. You exactly. start creating mm-hmm. you start creating a, a reality that is conducive to your thought process. You get what I'm saying? And that's not what's happening. All right, so let's see what we got next. All right. Um Then remember that all this is happening because you are causing it to happen. As far as your subconscious mind is concerned, this is what you really want. So whatever you see, no one is doing it to you. If you see it, you believe it, and you achieved it, and it's happening to you or around you, it's what your subconscious mind really wants. That's the litmus test. That's the test to know what you're programming yourself with by, the, by your physical results. That's the test to see how your magic is working by your physical results because your subconscious mind, as I pointed out, is the actor. It's delivering. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly delivering to you, and it's only delivering what you ask for. So now it should give you more understanding or depth to that statement you like to say or repeat that nothing precedes the thought. So everything in your physical reality precedes the conscious thought that your subconscious mind decided to act out for you. If you do not like it, your chore is to change your process or what you feed the subconscious mind. But you're too busy trying to physically change the fucking Illuminati. Even if you 
answered 35 times on the YouTube video of Beyonce's song being played backwards going, I love Satan, that still <laughs> does fucking nothing. It does nothing to change your reality. No, all, it does is, <laughs> all it does is make, make you a cheerleader for her and sells more fucking records. That's so awesome. much so, look at the back, the backfiring of this shit. Kids see my Baphomet piece because, of course, they like Beyonce and Jay-Z and tell me that shit's fire now. Little kids at the movie theater going, yo, that part from that piece is ill, son. I'm like, what, what's going on here? I, I better put down this fucking popcorn. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we should be drinking these goddamn cherry white smoothies anymore. I'm saying, we're in fucking public to kid, yo, that part from that piece is crazy, son. I'm like, what, what just happened here? What, what, what happened? You know what I'm saying? Because they're watching it now, and it's, made, it's actually backfiring. They're they're more aware of this shit, so now it's, it's attached to shit that's cool for them. Right, oh, right. As a matter of fact, while I'm here, let me get this book because we in the moon of Capricorn, and I just remembered I meant to put this down. It's in here. Let me read this shit about Baphomet to do a little sidebar real quick. Uh, I gotta find it. No, oh, no, actually, I marked the page. This book here is called. This is a book that I give out in my class when we get to the symbology. And, and, and I like the way they worded this. We just happened to look. It's called Art and Symbols of the Occult, Images of Power and Wisdom by James Wasserman, W-A-S-S-E-R-M-A-N. Listen, because we in the – I think this is quite befitting as we are in the moon of Capricorn, which is Baphomet, you scary-ass motherfucker. So as we were talking about Apollo and being scared, let's read the symbol, the symbol of Baphomet. Baphomet. It's transcendental, transcendental, i never say that word, magic, um, by Ephias Levy. Ephias Levy is the white man who created it. And Bobby Hammond dropped that. He created it as a dedication to the Moors or Moorish science. Now, there's an Egyptian deity called Mafomet, which later became Mohammed. And Mohammed, the Moors, and Baphomet, you do the math. Baphomet is nothing more than Mohammed or Mm Mafomet. Grow up, folks. It's our shit. Now, the multi-level symbol represents the mysterious god of the Templars. The fearsome androgynous with a woman's breast and an erect phallus, the goat-headed horned devil of nightmares. Yes, he is Pan, god of magic and initiation, concealing a smile within the horror. Listen closely. Concealing a smile within the horror. The arms pointing up and down signify, as above, so below. Remember, ain't that our shit? Come on now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Analysts and synthes and synthesize the path he, he analyzes and synthesizes the path of knowledge. The wings symbolize the flight of the liberated soul. Listen. The wings symbolize the flight of the liberated soul. The flaming torch between the horns of fertility is awakening is the awakened crown chakra. His, the flaming horn is the awakened crown chakra. The magical light of universal equilibrium. Baphomet is the light bearer, clothed in the disguise of evil. In the disguise of evil. Grow up, motherfuckers. It ain't that scary. You're only looking at a goat. You know what I'm saying? The, all of this Baphomet getting next to it, I don't... I don't vibrate with that symbol. You don't vibrate with the symbol because you're not conscious. If you were conscious, you would be able to see all of that shit that was just laid the fuck out. It it is a total symbol encapsulated encapsulated consciousness, kundalini light. I break this shit down in my book. If you understand the Necronomicon shut nigger off as the the, uh, giving out the thousand young, I explain how Polar opposite is Baphomet, where he takes this this outgiving energy, brings it in, and becomes enlightened. 
this this goat or this kid, which represents you. So in the age of Capricorn, I thought we'd just put that out there. All right, getting back to the lesson. Back to the lesson. So let me see where were we. So remember that all this is happening because you caused it to happen as far as your subconscious mind is concerned. This is what you really want. Most of these wants are pushed into your subconscious mind before you were old enough to resist. But nonetheless, they are there. So we need to understand most of what you think you are will, will fed to you. It's pushed to you. And because white folks understand that, mm-hmm. first and foremost, they, they push the framework to you from religion because they made us feel that it's our saving grace. Is what we do. You get what I'm saying? You look at a Tyler Perry movie, you would feel that this is black people, and that's all that's all there ever was in terms of a church mentality. Now, what's this framework, as I pointed out in the beginning, this motif, this way of the, seeing the world, even if you do give up your Jesus, if you do give up your Islam, if you do give up your Judaism, that motif has not changed. It is the framework from which all things come in. So you take Morris science and make it a religion. You take Nuwabian science, make it a religion. You take the dark side of magic, it's a religion. I'm dark, nigga. That ain't like freeing you. You just as fucked up on that. Dark side, (laughs) nigga. Dark side forever, nigga. (laughs) I'm saying, if it ain't dark, it ain't like you just as fucked up as them. It's the same religious motif. You get what I'm saying? So you could take anything in religious science or you could take anything and make it, if you have a scientific approach, turn it into something that's beneficial for you. Even Islam, what Elijah Muhammad did was take that religion and made it scientific and work for niggas at that time. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At that time. You get what I'm saying? Because he's a scientist and, and all you have to do is read his books and and get his understanding, you will find his understanding just on Kabbalah alone was, was like, how did he know that? Knowing black came from triple darkness and all the rest of the stuff that he put down early on. So you knew he knew. He was a straight occultist. But had mm-hmm. to breastfeed, breastfeed, so he took the Islam religion, which was, which, which, um, and, and, and scientifically form fitted it for the agenda of black folks. Mm hmm. Now, so, so, you know, this concept here, this concept here is what we need to grasp here. That's, this is the point. This concept of a scientist versus this framework that you must destroy. Just because you don't say Jesus no more, you ain't over. Just because <laughs> all about on your block talking about Jesus, and you the one going, hmm, I know that ain't true. You know what I'm saying? You ain't out the game. You still in the game. The mere fact that you think you need to sit there and argue with them shows us that you ain't out the game. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck Jesus. Fuck Jesus. Nah, nigga. Christ is my friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm Christ. Mm-hmm. You're Christ. All you have to read is the Gnostic books, and they'll tell you that. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? All you have to do is read the Gnostic books. Gnostic books is, the pre- is where Christianity came out of. So you need to be able to go back to where this shit came from. You get what I'm saying? See, when you have that religious motif, you think you need something outside of yourself to tap in, like a mushroom or something, mm-hmm. like a joint. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You don't need none of that. You know what I'm saying? That's because you have a religious motif, and that's what's real. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. you get rid of that, you realize all things are in you, as above, so below, as within, so without. You get what I'm exactly. saying? This is an illusionary world. You can't tell me there's something there's something in this illusionary world that's going to give you your reality, other than you. This world was this illusion is built upon your dream, so there's nothing in this dream that's realer than what's in your own goddamn mind. No goddamn mushroom that's realer than what's in your own mind in the illusion. Come on now, this is 101 occult science. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. You must you must have skipped a day and must have skipped a day in fucking in math class, fucking that bullshit. <laughs> the magical act without a physical result is not magic. A magical act without a physical result is not magic. 
A magical act without a physical result is not magic. Everything you do magically, everything you do ritualistically is to obtain a physical result. Otherwise, it fails. And it only fails not because the ritual or or magic doesn't work. It only fails because you haven't convinced your own subconscious mind that it's real. Simple as that. You haven't convinced your own subconscious mind is real. The ritual, the deity, the routine, all of those things are to just appease the left side of your brain so the right side of the brain can feed the creativity, the intuition, the knowing portion of the subconscious mind. And then the reality will change. You will see what you need to see. Even if nobody else sees it, doesn't matter. No one needs to co-sign. You get what I'm saying? No one needs to co-sign with, with your reality. As long as you think the fire hydrant is green, then by all means, the fire hydrant is green. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> as long as you live accordingly and you can deal with that reality. We're too busy trying to be logic and say, no, everybody says it's red, and that's what matters because mm-hmm. everyone says, it, says it's red. No, that's a white religious motif a white way of thinking, a logical human way of trying to come to terms in agreement with an illusionary world. Yes, sir. Over it. Over it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why they'll tell you in this magic that, in fact, Bobby Hemmings has told us, you're actually supposed to go a little bit insane. He's not talking about where you're standing outside trying to lick a fire hydrant. What he's talking about is people won't see it your way anymore because you are not seeing it like every, you're taking a, you're stepping out the boundary of seeing it like everyone else. You're stepping off the le- you're stepping in what they call the left-hand path. You're getting mm-hmm. out of the routine. No matter if the routine is bad for you as Christianity or good for you as fucking Ifa in in fucking the Yoruba people. Let's even say at that time it was good for you. Even, even you still are trying to step out of the path of what is good or bad. The, the object is just stepping out of routine thought, which makes it magical. Because once the, the entire thought becomes routine and the subconscious minds have agreed with it, it becomes what? Normal. So then normal is no longer magical. It's no longer stepping outside of a box, even though it may be magical to somebody else. Because if we were in the 70s and I said, well, we're on blog talk radio and everyone's on their computer Ooh, magic. <laughs> but now a computer on Blog Talk Radio is normal. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Using a cell phone is normal. If I was sitting there going, you know, one day we're all going to have phones and walking around. If I said this to my moms in the 70s, we're all going to have phones in our pocket and be able to talk to anybody. She'd go, for what the fuck for? I ain't got nothing to say to you that I can't wait till 6 o'clock, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> then you get home. But now our reality is cell phones. So yep. now it's no longer magical. You get what I'm saying? Because why? It's normal. So when you normalize things, it no longer becomes magical. Magic is only something that steps out the framework of routine and normalcy. That's great. Mm-hmm. You know, come on, abracadabra, niggas, you know, abracadabra. <laughs> see, see, you're interested in what Bobby says magically because the way he's talking is not like everybody else. The way I talk is not like everybody else. Why? Because my thinking and my goal of thinking is to be, I, why the fuck I want to be like, not, why the fuck I want to be like you? We're suffering. You know what I'm saying? We're suffering. So the object is you're trying to think in a different context in a different context. So, so let me see. And I know we're at the 10 o'clock mark, and we're going to keep going to this thing. Cuts out. I'm seeing calls starting to drop. But remember, panic pack at hotmail.com for your herb packs. You're listening to First World Order Radio, Wednesdays, 8 o'clock, blog talk radio slash Aline Bay, blog talk radio slash Aline Bay, A-L-I-M-B-A-Y, you know what I'm saying? First off, radio, we're going to keep going. Subjects on this level of the game. And remember to email me for classes. I have a new product list, panicpack at hotmail.com. 
And there's all you, you can also go to uh, Dr. Aleem Elbay dot com. He has plenty of supplies and magical needs techniques. We're into things that you can do. Aleem sells things that you can do, and we're gonna keep going till we get kicked out the room. Perhaps we'll be back with some Q and A next week. We'll see what Aleem's doing, or perhaps the week after. But you know where to look for us. Keep an eye open, and we're gonna keep doing this thing. So, um, inner guardians are the gods. Uh, the any uh, uh, okay. So the not as a gift. From, your magic is not a gift from the inner guardians of the gods. It is something that you are entitled to. So we need to understand magic is your is your natural science. It's not something that you fall into and you're special because you have fell into it. It is your fucking natural science. You get what I'm saying? It is your natural science. Um, let me see where we at. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Uh, a surface of a pool, which we have dropped the pebble, dropped the pebble. God, by God, I mean the ultimate creativity entity, does not approve or disapprove. Any action we take is our choice, and we must live with it. This is the real idea of karma. What that's talking about is just because you drop a pebble in a pool, and it creates an action reaction. Bad or good has nothing to do with it. We just have to live with the consequences of what, what it is we do for our own personal interpretation. So it has nothing to do with bad or good. There's nothing out there that is saying you have done something bad because you didn't take care of kids or you have done something bad or you have done something good because you've taken care of a lot of kids. There's only action, reaction, um, consequence based upon based upon your action, and those consequences are based upon your thoughts. So if you're not getting your thoughts and how you feel about things, if that's not in order, then that's where we're suffering. And that's when we are suffering uh, uh, because of this reason. Mm -hmm. Power is neither positive or negative, good or bad, nor any other division we can think of. Right. It just is. It is an abundant and given freely so that we may create freely and hopefully, and hopefully with, with wisdom. It does not help those who are deemed to be good. It does not put down those who are deemed to be bad. That's why the white man has been doing what he's been doing to you, and nothing's been happening to him. Exactly. The same old routine of bullshit that happens to him happens to you. The same old good shit, the same old bad shit. While you waiting for some big shit to strike them down because they told you this shit in church that this kind of shit would happen, and you hanging out with your religious motif waiting for Osiris to get them this time. You know what I'm saying? If you're not waiting for Jesus, you're waiting for Horus to come or Ogun to come to get them, and they're sitting around going, we know the science. We know your black science. We know it doesn't matter. We know bad and good or any other division, as they pointed out, does not exist. It's only action and reaction. And they keep taking action, and you keep reacting to their actions. We need to be actionary people. We need to start taking control of our situation. So, it, so what you do, like Oshun does not see you as good or bad. She does not help you because you sucked her titties. She does not hate you because you kicked her in the ass. You get what I'm saying? It does not work like it does not work that way. It does not help those who are deemed to be good. It does not put down those who deem to be bad. There's no such thing as good and evil. It is all a question of attitude towards any given situation. What is good for any person may be totally bad for another. We have uh, we have been conditioned to think that certain things are good and others are bad. But all that is that really so? Think about that. All this good and bad shit is basically in the devil versus Jesus. None of it is at, none of it is real. It is based upon conditioning. We have to leave yeah. this conditioning alone. That's why you think powers are bad. It's based upon your devil conditioning. You get what I'm saying? That's why you think your wishes are good and light bearers. It's based upon your your Jesus conditioning. Has nothing to do with one. There's polarity, and one's, 
One can be looked as light, one can look as dark, but it has nothing to do with anything. It has to do with intention, it has to do with subconscious and conscious mind. By all means, have a, have, a, have a rain god if it will produce rain when most people need it. As superstition crept in, however, it became necessary to appease these gods. Mm-hmm. So we had rain gods, love gods, this god. But when the superstition came in, there's a word that comes into play called we now have to appease these gods. And that's where we all fucked up from. Mm-hmm. I have to do this to exactly. appease Oshun. I have to do this to appease Apollo. If I don't, do, if I don't get cut, I'm not in the game. You get what I'm saying? If I don't go through this initiation, I'm not in the game because I didn't appease them. That's a part of superstition, which is the precursor to religion. Get it mm-hmm. through your heads, niggas. Big this time. is our issue. This is our issue. These are our problems. You're too busy trying to learn some extra shit, but all you need to learn is what you need to do is unlearn what it is you think you know. And right. that's where all your natural, your natural black Self will start to come through in Africa, Dabra nigga. You got a top hat on, and you've been, and you'll be making elephants disappear in no time. Even, even with ritual sacrifice, it became necessary to appease these God. The image or symbol ended up being misunderstood, and we have trouble, and we had trouble with that ever since. There could be no excuse for bowing and scraping. Um, to an image that was, after all, but created by humans in the first place. Well, God damn, let me say that shit again. There can be no excuse for bowing and scraping to an image that was, after all, created by humans in the motherfucking first place. How are you kissing Oshun's ass and a bunch of niggas at a particular time, created her for the for 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 their purposes, their use as a tool for them to access the energy. And now you are bowing and scraping to a fucking image. You are scared, terrified of something called Baphomet, the Apollos. How dare you call yourself anything but what you are, Sherman, Fantasia, Jacqueline. Chauncey, Darnell, get back to that shit because that's what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> um, But you bowing and scraping to these fucking images. You know what I'm saying? These energies, kissing some energies ass, bowing down to a polarity <laughs> on the dark side. You fucking worshiping a polarity. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The image of symbol ended up being misunderstood. Ain't that what happened to Jesus? If you know the story of Christ, it's, a, it's talking about the divine force of consciousness that rises up within you. So now this symbol has been ended up being misunderstood until a white man coming back, until you, until you up hot for loot, Negroes. It's a black person coming back. He was really black because his feet were burned in a furnace and his hair was woolly and his feet was burned in a fur- furnace. So, you know, this misunderstood symbol is a nigga named fucking Ben Panther or some kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? The black Santa Claus is here now. You know what I'm saying? Get it together. Get it together, folk. All right, hold on. Let me see what we got now. Um, uh, Ooh, shit. There's still more. In blind belief, blind belief is something usually without reason. Superstition is an example of blind belief. Superstition is an example of blind belief. Just like those people in my class believed that you can't put an altar in the room. Why? Blind belief. Some lady on Facebook said it. I believe it blindly. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Hmm. And if you get down in the core of half the shit you think you are, is because of blind belief based upon some shit your mama said. Oh, don't you want to go in there and do that? That guy said that Jesus. And then now you believe that bullshit. <laughs> and then when you finally get over Jesus, that's if you go in there and that goddamn old shoe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Same shit, different yep. name. You get that's what I'm all. saying? True belief is another 
True belief is another matter. It is saying logical and will stand up to any test, and it can be proved to the person who has it. True belief comes in faith in true fact, cosmic laws, and usually needs a lot of self searching to obtain. See, I'm in the I'm this shit I know is real based upon my true belief. I don't believe I don't have blind or superstitious belief. I believe in what I know based upon hard study, hard experimentation, hard science and my mentality as a scientist, my mentality as an alchemist, my mentality as someone who has a hands on experience with mm-hmm. this magical world and who is very convinced that anyone with a melanin, pineal, kundalini can do the same and greater. Yes, sir. That belief, that mm-hmm. faith in what it is I know, not blind belief. If you tell me you got 10 cents in your hand, I know it's true because I looked in your hand, not just because I believe what you say is in your hand. You get what I'm saying? I, I've been selling herb packs to make you feel the power. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Giving out books, which I, I, I have a stack of books that I'm going to try to get to before we get cut off tonight so you can feel the big brother Dean Almighty. <laughs> you can feel the power. <laughs> big brother Dean Almighty. <laughs> the, more, the more relaxed you are, the easier it is to visualize. So bear in mind, the tension is the enemy of the ritual. You are the most intense, scared Negroes to get into some magic. How, remember, how can you not even relax and convince in your own prowess? You follow me when I'm saying? You are worried. I hear the fear. I smell the fear on Facebook. So you are not even relaxed for all this magic shit to even be working. You are tense. You are worried about chemtrails. You are worried about chicken. What the fuck they putting in chicken and and what goddamn macaroni not to eat? You're so do the diet that you need to do. But if it becomes your religion, your that's another thing. Fucking food is a religion now. You know what I'm saying? I don't eat flax seeds. You know what I'm saying? Flax panic. You flax you're so crazy. Them you you and your you and your crazy turkey burgers. What will you ever learn? Here's the key: vegetables are not the key to enlightenment, folks. You know what I'm saying? Vegetables will not get you into heaven. You know what I'm saying? Get over it. You know what I'm saying? It will make your humanity feel better sometimes. But sometimes you just got to eat a devil dog. I see it all the time. All them niggas come to my class with them lemons and goddamn green peppers eating them shit. I leave the Snickers out. Somehow, I always have to get a fresh dose of Snickers for every class, <laughs> all, you, all you fucking fancy pants. I'm always out of Snickers by the end of the class for all you androgynous, you know, androgynous <laughs> vegetation guys. That becomes a religion too. I'm not saying your diet is bad. I'm saying your diet should not be a part of your self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not about your self-esteem, <laughs> your magic, and your subconscious programming. You're just using diet to program your subconscious, and now it's healthy. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Which is all good. Do whatever you need to do. Like I said, if the fire, hy- fire hydrant is green, then it's green. Why stop there? The universe is yours. Not, you should not be subjugated or categorized within whatever it is you're doing. Holistic, nigga, you like to use the word holistic, but holistically understand that at all times you must be dealing with the whole self, and a part of the whole mind is the subconscious. It is the most dominant part. It is that part of you that makes it real. It is Mm -hmm. where the party is at. It is where all the fucking is going on. Mm -hmm. It's for invite to the orgy. Go there, pull your pants down, start sucking on twindling titties or something, because if you're not doing it, if you're not doing it, you are doing nothing but indulging your ego all day. That's right. You're indulging your ego with names, onks, dresses, information, posts. You're better off playing K 
Candy Crush Saga, you get farther. <laughs> then all this bullshit <laughs> going back and forth with this information of nothingness and not penetrating it and not becoming it. Talking it ain't becoming it. You could talk a good one, you got to become a good one. Tyson could talk a good one, but he knocked a few niggas out along the way. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to put up your dukes. You're gonna have to put up your dukes and throw some swings instead of just fucking repeating, repeating. Yeah, just repeating information and information. You know, all I see in my fucking Facebook group is where well, Bobby really dropped it on this one. Like, okay, but he's telling you to do some shit. You know what I'm saying? Tell me what you did from that video. Here's another one from Bobby. Like, yeah, what did you do that he said on that video right. that took you from point A to point B? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What did you do? Tell me. This why I, This is why I'm putting up this video, because it helped me get over my fibroids, and now I want to help you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It helped me with my it helped me with my fibroids or my lung cancer, and now I want to help you. I, what Bobby said, it worked for me. Now I hope it works for you. Morning, well, he's just dropping some shit here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> where was the hat? Uh, <laughs> superstition is an example of blind belief. And superstition has no place in magic. So we got all that true belief and so on and so forth. Um, Let me see. Someone, uh, never accept someone else's line of thinking until you get your truth by asking why. Then when you know why, you can accept the belief or reject the disbelief. Mm -hmm. Remember, belief is a, disbelief is a goddamn form of belief. Disbelief is a goddamn form of belief. I don't believe panic because he panic. I don't believe panic because he talking blah for me. I don't believe panic because he... That's a form of fucking religion, nigga. I don't know. He said the word of cold. I don't believe it. He curses. I don't believe him. You get what I'm saying? So disbelief is a form of disbelief. Your, 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 your aggression in not accepting something new is a part of your religious programming. Get it together, Negroes. Mm-hmm. It can cause um, it can cause the subconscious to actualize that reality. So if you disbelieve me, then you're gonna you're never gonna believe nothing I said because your subconscious mind is actualizing the reality that you're supposed to disbelieve me. Because I said because you're scared of Baphomet or whoever the fuck I met. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All beliefs are actualized. All your beliefs are actualized. Everything you are is based upon what you believe. Everything you are is based upon what you believe, so-called good or so-called bad. If you do not change your belief system, if you do not change what it is you believe in your mind, then you are doing nothing. You may call yourself Batar, but I know you don't believe it. Right. You may call yourself my eye, but I know you don't believe it because I can see the manifestation on what you truly believe is in your manifestation. You get what I'm saying? You don't believe it. This is why the, this is why superstitions work because for some they are believable, if even if to others they may appear silly. They may appear Jesus appears silly to some motherfuckers. See, we hear mm-hmm. you're gonna die and go to heaven, and there's gonna be twelve naked Muslims, virgin Muslims, if you suicide bomb yourself. <laughs> so everybody on Bill Maher and and then, oh, that's so silly. <laughs> Not to the Muslim who's blowing himself up. It ain't as silly. It, I ain't seen none of these Christians strap a bomb to their ass yet, though, over Jesus. No, sir. But the Muslim superstition, they go to heaven with 21 virgins or whatever the fuck it is. They believe in that <laughs> shit while we giggling with them motherfuckers, but they got bombs on going, yeah, nigga, I believe this shit. So superstition may appear silly to others, but it's be- but but it's believable, and that's the key. Remember, superstition is really the the, the, the problem behind religion. Mm-hmm. All right, now um, let's see. Um, uh, let's go here. You know, all my old notes are gone. Y'all gonna love this. I got so many old notes, and that's what we've been going through 
on a lean show, and everybody you give me the feedback, it's a whole new day. That's right, because of these fucking notes. I'm going through my notes. Fuck that shit. Y'all going to study what I study. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Someone force me. Y'all ain't going to read this shit. I'll read the shit to you. <laughs> but, but the far best way to use control magic uh, is imagine, controlled imagination or visualization. Anything visualized and believed will actualize physically. So your visualization is the key to this shit. And the more potent the visualization, the better results. Magic uses a special imaginary language called symbology. So our imagination and our visualization, when you watch something from YouTube and it's Maxwell Jordan and and David Icke telling you all this dramatic reptilian shit, you start to visualize. Mm-hmm. You start to, in your mind, wrap your mind around what he's saying to actualize what he's talking about. Therefore, the symbols start to come, and therefore you are starting to program your mind with reptilians and evil mind diggers and the Merovingian family and the pulsating necks and Clinton ate Tupac's heart and all the rest of this kind of shit. <laughs> you start to visualize it. And physically, this shit becomes true. You still think Michael Jackson is, Michael, Elvis and Michael Jackson is or Tupac is alive and shit. Magic uses a special, in, see, like, they can do a documentary and, and the shit will be real because it's, it's kind of what you, you, see, nobody's peeping this shit. Nobody wanted Elvis to die. Nobody wanted Tupac to die. Nobody wanted Michael Jackson to die. They exactly. do a documentary, and then because you don't want it, you actualize and visualize, and your will is there. That shit sounds so real. You know what I'm saying? Shit is like, that nigga's alive, man, I'm telling you. But, like, where does these niggas go? Like, like what, Tupac, alive? Come on, how much money do you think rap was really making? <laughs> Who this nigga could, <laughs> you think he's in Cambodia somewhere? I mean, I know people who You know what I'm saying? Who yeah, don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They going blog talk, you know, like Jason yeah, went down to see him. He in Cuba. He in Cuba, or some kind of <laughs> shit. Like, I, the, the, our minds are so powerful. I wouldn't imagine a nigga just walking around Cuba right now. Well, how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> These niggas must have brought me back. <laughs> so magic uses a special imaginary language called symbology. Symbols are geometric patterns of power that the subconscious mind understands that combine with other visual imagery that enhances the effect, as you will see later, magic without this inner working merely is superstition and theatricals. We need to understand, and I go into detail in my class, about symbols, the power of symbology, the language of symbology, how to talk to you symbolic. See, all of the stuff that I'm talking about in my class, I teach you how to do it, how to use the symbols, how symbology is the language of the subconscious mind, how to activate the symbols, how to... Talk. That, why do you think I know how to decode movies? Very easy, because mm-hmm. I understand the language of symbology is what they're using in each movie, which is images or pictures with a nothing but a series of symbols being mm-hmm. played over and over and over again, told in the format of mythology, because that's the only storytelling, mytholo- storytelling motif that they know is our mythology. So once you understand mythology, you see the comparisons, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, correspondence, you'll be able to see in movies all they're doing is using the mythology motif to tell a story. And once you understand the mythologies, you'll be able to decode any movie, especially once you un- understand the symbols and how they're trying to promote symbols. All could be done when you start to speak the language of the subconscious mind, which I show you how to do in class, abracadabra niggas. <laughs> Email panicpack at hotmail dot com and get your, you know what I'm saying. Get your free, get your government cheese. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Come on and get your nourishment. I mean, this shit is really going down here. Herb packs, all of that. Come on now, you bullshitting you. I'm still seeing niggas. <laughs> hey, nigga, I've been listening to you for years. This is the first time I'm getting an herb pack. I'm like, oh, nigga, you are so late to this party, but I'll be more than happy to send one your way. But like, what are you waiting for? All right, all thoughts produce results. All thoughts produce results. All thoughts produce results. So you need to think of everything that you deal with is actually producing a thought, 
which which brings you into visualization and then brings you into uh, 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 brings it into your reality. So you're not just watching YouTube just to be watching YouTube. You're talking some Meet the Brown shit. You watching that bullshit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, uh, my man, you know, I, if it's on, I have the ability to watch all that bullshit without being offended too. But I'm also able to break down how offensive Tyler Perry is. But I can also watch it and shut that off. You get what I'm saying? So we were watching Meet the Browns, and you know I'm gigging off this shit. I'm like, yeah, this shit is so ignorant. It's probably I'm like, it's it's so shocking of how this level of ignorance is just mm-hmm. being passed by. You know, and, come on, Cora. So I'm on the phone with King Cook, like, yeah, Cora. And he's like, you know, King Cook is younger. So he's like, yeah, I'm like. I said, now I want you to think for a minute. Close your eyes. Imagine if that was your father. <laughs> you could just pause for a minute and just think about Because, you know, he's laughing. I said, think about that. I said, now you got to remember, on one hand, I see the goofing and the coolness and it's funny, but this image goes around the world. And they don't know you. See, you know the complexities of your uncles, your real father. You know what a black man is just by living in the ghetto. You just see, you just see a whole world of it. But the, around the world, they're programming these motherfuckers with that image. There's a Hindu lady on Khadija's job. Real funny lady knows a lot of Negro shit. She's a Christian now, but her parents is the old Hindu people. She married the the, the young girl married a black dude. Said so the mother came from India. The black dude was at the house Jamaican dude. Said so the mother never seen a black dude. Walked in the house and lost it. After she calmed her the fuck down, she's like, "Don't they have the baby mama drama and all this kind of shit?" <laughs> like, and you know, she said everything from fucking basically TV and Tyler Perry, because that's all she knows. So, the image is more damaging to those who don't know. We here laugh at that or take it like not even conscious folks, but it's designed for the regular church going folks or the regular Negro folks to laugh at that and take. Foolishness of that because they have they know their deacons and all the rest of that shit are men with dignity, so it looks like this is an individual. But if you have twenty four hours of Meet the Browns and Tyler Perry in the fucking oh. breast, mm. you know what I'm saying around the world, it, it serves as a form of programming. You get what I'm yeah, saying. Sure. So all thoughts produce results. You know what I'm saying results. These results change the thinking of the world, and that's why they don't take you seriously. For exactly. instance, Oprah, as serious as they take her, she said she wanted to be president. Let's see how that goes. You know what I'm saying? As serious as Oprah, and Oprah, she's the most powerful bitch ever. Not to mention, they got a movie called The Butler coming out. I almost vomited when I seen this shit. Forrest Whitaker's painting this butler. Mm. They smacking the revolutionary brother around. Oprah's in it, so that's what I'm <laughs> Motherfucking, um, what's that light-skinned dude? He said he had a love scene with Oprah. Uh, uh, Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. That's, that, you, he's a, that got to be about the nastiest nigga. <laughs> Who the fuck <laughs> wants to see a love scene with Oprah? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's fucking like watch, watching the church deacons fuck. You know what I'm saying? There's some kind of shit like that. It's like watching church deacons fuck. You know what I'm saying? Who wants to see some kind of shit like that? <laughs> So like he's like yeah you know what I'm saying Oprah didn't hold back I'm like nigga Oprah could have held back you know what I'm saying <laughs> she could have held back nigga and nobody was waiting nobody was waiting for to see her nipples nigga you know what I'm saying <laughs> ooh that's Oprah's nipple <laughs> I got fucking Nia Long up in that bitch nigga <laughs> no, somebody now you know so and this shit called the Butler in this day and but see, it's by this nigga. This nigga's on a mission. He hate black people. The same nigga who did uh, uh, Monsters Ball and Precious mm. did this movie, The Butler, about a butler who gets this job at the White House to bustle for Whitey. He said, you're a special butler. Did you go to college? No, sir. I never went to college. I went to Waccamaw State Grammar School, and now I'm here. I'm like, Forrest Whitaker can do anything. He's another nigga that do anything. I try to stick in with Forrest Whitaker, but fuck him, lazy eye fucker. I try to hang in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I tried to hang in there when he did, um, what's he call it? When he did, uh, 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 
when he played oh when he played that motherfucker in Jason's lyric, I said okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him slide on that. And then that shit in in, in that shit with the great debaters, if you wrong a man and take a man's pig, you can repay that man. With that pig, <laughs> but if you take a man's life, you cannot repay that man as if it was a pig. Like tell me, I'm like, all right, nigga, I'm gonna let that shit go. I can't, I can't go with the butler. <laughs> Fuck Forrest Whitaker forever. Fuck him. <laughs> Crying game ass motherfucker. I'm gonna let him go. Oprah and shit. You're like, I'm sick of niggas. I'm sick of niggas. <laughs> I'm sick of niggas. <laughs> Will thought produces results, physical results, <laughs> oh. and, the, um, and the thought uses the power to create. In a normal li- in a normal life, we generally are unaware of this, this process. Yet it happens all the time as we create around us uh, what we desire and what we do not desire. Magic is the art of knowing how to use this creative creative process to produce produce results that are desirable. So basically, we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. No white man is doing this. No Jesus is doing it. No Apollos are doing this. No, I did that and this is doing that. It's you. It's you. It's you. You, that's that's what the point is when you say you're a god or a goddess. That means you were supposed to realize that you're doing it. Guess what? The Zodiac ain't doing it for your ass neither. No. They're not doing it for you. They're try- It's a guide. You get what I'm saying? It's telling you what the energy is on the planet for humanity. But when you start saying you're a god, you become the 13th, which is the Christ energy. That's what Jesus was doing. As the disciples, mm-hmm. he was there to discipline. That disciple and discipline is the same word. It means to discipline those 12 zodiacs. Is the zodiac wrong? No. Don't be silly. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying if you make it a religion or a superstitious mentality, mm-hmm. or I can't give it no Pisces, then you have failed. You have now taken right. something that's ancient and superstitious, mm-hmm. and then you have changed it into the same motif, motif that no longer serves you, but now becomes your anchor, your chain, and your problem. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So any of it can be. Any of this ancient information can be an anchor, a chain, or your problem based upon your mentality. And we need to come to terms with your mentality was laid out by your parents since you was born. You are under this mind control. It's very rare not to be under it. If your parents didn't go to church, the grandmother takes you extra hard because they failed with your parents. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's even worse to have that church grandmother than your parents. Yeah. Because they're, they're trying to redeem in you what they failed with with your goddamn mama. You know what I'm saying? So lucky for me. Lucky for Brother Panic, not only did my parents never went to fucking church and never knew nothing about it, both sides of my grandparents weren't in the church. My grandfather was a straight occult magician of the worst kind. You know what I'm saying? That shit that y'all niggas are scared of, that was that's the beginning of where this motherfucker started. I'm still scared of this motherfucker. I see fingers and shit at his house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and on my other side was the Louisiana side, which was all into magic, nigga. So grandparents deep magic. So I did, I was lucky to dodge that religious mind control bullet, even from the grandparents, and, and really to a certain extent, meaning I just wasn't there. So it was easier to give up. And like I said, but it doesn't matter, no matter where you at, as long as you address this shit, you can give it up. You just need to know that's what you're giving up. You're giving up the motif. Even though you think you gave up Jesus, it doesn't stop there. It gives up with, it, it, you need to give up deifying shit outside of you that is going to save your ass. Once you realize what's in you, you can only say, you need to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, abracadabra. Put yourself, <laughs> put yourself, oh, you need to deal with your own, you can wait for some shit to help your ass. <laughs> Ain't nothing coming, nigga. Ain't nothing nope. coming, nigga. Mm. Nothing coming. Quasal quotu, nobody, nigga. That shit is energy <laughs> that you're supposed to access and fucking save yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Save yourself with. All right, let me try to get out cause a little bit more information. We cover most of that. I'm just going to try to run through this as quick as I can before we get cut off. 
because I have so many books and I'm going to attach it to this thing. What I have here is a list of books that you will find at Botanicas. Botanicas are places where you can find magical uh, 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 tools to help you with your magic. There is a magical culture which you will find at Botanicas. There are a bunch of magical Botanica books. I'm going to give you most of the books that are found in Botanicas. But you can get these books on Amazon as well. To find a Botanica, there are Botanicas online, or go online and find a Botanica near you. Don't ask me where Botanica near you is and you live in Canada or some shit. How the fuck would I know? <laughs> People are like, Pat, where's a Botanica near me? I live in Denver. Like, how the fuck would I know? I don't, I don't have a, a dossier. So you have to find the best Botanica. At the very least, there's Botanicas online where you can get these particular supplies, because you'll find there's a culture of name of supplies, John, Lucky John's Foot, and John Rabbit's Toe, and this Four Thieves Vinegar. I'm like, when I was reading that show, I'm like, where the fuck did you get all of this? Then I went downstairs to the botanics and said, oh, everything's here. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, shit, okay. Oh, good. I thought I was going to, I thought I was never getting into this magic shit. But I'm going to give you all the botanical books where you can learn about spells, what Bobby has told you was to uh, 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 kind of add something else to it. That's why they're all in books. So these are all routines. But then once you start to know the culture, the kind of stuff, you'll mix and match your own stuff. So Botanica books or books in general that you should be having. Voodoo and Hoodoo by Jim Haskins. Voodoo and Hoodoo by Jim Haskins. H-A-S-K-I-N-S. Good book on Voodoo and Hoodoo. Tells you the difference, the more... Traditional practice versus the more uh, 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 witchcrafty practice, voodoo versus hoodoo. Voodoo Shaman, the Haitian way of, of healing and, and power by Ross Haven, H-E-A-V-E-N. Um, a pretty good book on the voodoo, a lot about healing, a lot of spells in here. In here if you can get it, The Life and Works of Marie, Lave- Marie Laveau. Her name is spelled M-A-R-I-E, last name L-A-V-E-A-U. Grist Grist Cleanings, Charms, Hexes uh, by Raul Carnazares. Baba Raul Carnazares, he also has a pen name, uh, Robert Laramie. He's passed. We made contact with him. He's also wrote a book on Paolo I'm going to give to you. Uh, in fact, I'm going to skip to that so I can get this point out. Um, but first, if you could get this book, uh, the Life and Works of Marie Laveau was out of print. Excellent book on some of the magic of Marie Laveau. And I have these religious voodoo voodoo dudes always telling me how they can't stand Marie Laveau. And she wasn't a real magician. I'm like, yeah, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Right. Mr. Uh, Mr., um, Mr. Religious Guy. Don't even know it. Guy. All right. Um, there's a book by Robert uh, – by – Baba Raul Carnazera is called The Book on Paolo, Deities, Initiation, Rituals, and Ceremonies. Now, there's four branches of Paolo, and he talks about them. Uh, let me see if I can find them real quick. Okay. There's Paolo uh, Riumba, Paolo Monte, Paolo Mayombe, and Paolo uh, uh, Kimbis, Kimbisa. Paolo Riumba. Biomba, Briomba is the most African, it holds its most African retentions. Palo Monte is identified with goodness, while Palo Mayombe is thought to be evil. Palo Kimbisa is the most Christianized and Masonic Palo set. He writes about Palo Monte, which is uh, uh, considered the Palo of goodness. And what he did was, most of the Apollo deities he added with the Orisha deities in this book. So prior to this book, I remember dealing with the Orisha people. You say the word Apollo, it was like going in church saying Satan is Satan is my is my best friend, or I just put Satan on my buddy's list. They would lose their fucking mind. But when he had the book that connected the Apollos with the Orishas, all of a sudden you had a whole bunch of Polaros now. Everybody was going to get cut and being pulled out. Woo! Because it feels safe because the Orishas are involved in this shit now. But ultimately, 
The difference is Paolo Miombe. If you, I sell this book, you can get it from me. It's out of print called Paolo Miombe, Spirits, Rituals, and Spells, The Dark Side of Santeria. Dun, 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 dun. By Carlos Montenegro. Montenegro's been doing a lot of books in Spanish. Um, pa- most Pablo books are in Spanish. Montenegro did one in English, and the whole community turned against him. So now all these Caleros, again, you shouldn't sell his book. He fucked a lot of people up. He ain't this. He ain't shit. He ain't that. I said, well, you're only proving to me that you are following a man and not the science in the book. Right. So you're mad at this man and not the science shows me exactly what that Palo Palero shit is that you're tapping into. You're supposed to be dealing with the science. The science is valid. He deals with 11 deities that made their way from the African spirit through the South American way and last. They stayed in his family. Those 11 deities are solid. Those 11 um, sigils that we use are solid. Been solid. Old hat. It ain't like we're experimenting with this and we're going to see what happens. We already, this is old news. Been through it. Done it. Works well. Will work well. So anybody interested in the power, you can see that from me. It's out of book. That's the power of Miyambe. Uh There's also a book you can get in the Botanica's Brazilian Paulo Primer. Uh, this is by Robert Lowry, which is Baba Rao Carnazares. This deals with more of the Paulo that was in Cuba. Palmagera, all of them. This is a really hot little book. Brazilian, Paulo Prima, uh, uh, Kimbanda Recipes to Make You Win at Money, Love, Business, and Life by Robert Laramie. So it has a little bit of the human shit you can do to get it. Another book by Carlos Montenegro, um, which is Paulo's, uh, Paulo Nyambe yeah. Spirit, Rituals, and Spells. Um, when he was doing his classes, he was giving it out. Of course, people complained all about his classes, and they're not real, and they're not a, a real Paulo Polero wouldn't do that. And panic, you're not a real Polero. I'm like, you fucking right I'm not a per- real Polero. I'm a fucking god, motherfucker. I, I wouldn't sign myself up into no goddamn group setting or none of that shit. I'm a scientist. I deal with it all. You know what I'm saying? It's almost an insult to say I'm a real Polero or a real Orisha nigga. That's an insult to me. That's too small for me. And it should be too mm-hmm. small for you. But yeah. the science in this book, methodology, color schemes, and things you can do to access the energy is in this book. Another good book about the Orishas, uh, The Power of the Orishas, Santeria, and the Worship of the Saints by Migente Gonzalez, M-I-G-E-N-E, last name G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-S, Whipler. Migente Gonzalez Whipler. Whipler. W-I-P-P-L-E-R, and this is a Puerto Rican lady, actually, but she goes through each Orisha. She connects the same with each Orisha, herbs, days. She gives a whole one, two different paths of each Orisha. So, for instance, there's an Oshun of the swampy waters and an Oshun of, of muddy waters who's, like, down on her luck, which I never see those Oshuns on Facebook. Where's the dirty Oshuns at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We only right. have the honey old shoes on Facebook. Where the dirty ho old shoes at? You know what I'm right. saying? If you could get this, it's a Botanica book. The World's Greatest Magician, Black Herman. The Secrets, Magic, Mystery, and Ledgermain. Ledgermain Missing Keys to Success and ha- Happiness. Um, who is this by? Uh, copyright 1967. Uh, let me see. Um, it, I don't think it has, because uh, this was one of them old books. It might be considered to be written by Black Herman. Black Herman was, but it's called The World's Greatest Magician, Black Herman. It's a botanical book. You you can get it online. Um, but it's, it's talking about a black man from Harlem that, predated all the Houdinis and all those escape artists and all the rest of that shit who was dealing with real magic. He went to um, Egypt and came back with magic, and they, they would tell you things how he used to uh, lock his ass up in jail and then see this nigga say, playing dominoes in Harlem five minutes later. 
You know what I'm saying? They said we just gonna stop arresting this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, real interesting story about a black man who was heavy in the magic, Black Herman. And we could call on Black mm-hmm. Herman now for energy. Right now, anybody I didn't get a chance to talk about anybody doing spiritual work. Uh Richard Pryor is very active right now. Um, so deal with Richard Pryor uh now for some energy, those who do the work. Uh, another Botanica book, Original Black and White Magic by Marie Laveau, another book that may be hard to get, um, but rituals, burning of candles, using roots, powers, and incenses, significance of cause, horoscope, lucky day, lucky numbers, guide to spiritualist uh, mediums and readers. If you could get that, this is all Marie Laveau shit. This book is by Marie Laveau, and if you can get that, it's a Botanica book. You need to get, again, you're going to hear the language of the botanicas in the books that I'm giving you. This is where you get the supplies. When they're going to tell you get four of these, get a get a get a chestnut, get a get a get a get a happy nut. You be like, what the fuck is a happy nut? And you'll find all that shit is in botanicas, and they'll tell you exactly what it is. Another book. Uh, what was this? Is this? Uh, uh, no, I'm going to leave that out. If you could get this, get another book called How to Use an Ouija Boy. People ask me about that. Communication with the Spirit World by Michael St. Christopher. It's basically the Ouija board Bobby Drop is a Moorish is a Moorish divination tool. It is our thing. And it, it uh, what you have now in the game where people just uh start dealing with their Ouija board and just move their hands around so any any energy can come through, but there's a way to use their Ouija board with a goal and that will work for you um, in the book, How to Use an Ouija Board, Communication with the Spirit World by Michael St. Christopher. is a good one on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rituals and Spells of Sancteria, another one by uh, Magente Gonzalez Gonzalez Whitler. Magente Gonzalez Whitler. Sounds like she's saying her shit like that. Um, Rituals and Spells of Sancteria, so she goes through the Sancteria thing. Uh, another good book, Voodoo Rituals, A User's Guide by... Hikate Awaska, whatever. <laughs> Name is spelled H E I K E O W U S U. Voodoo Rituals, a user guide. Um, you know, goes through a lot of the basic voodoo rituals, you know, practical user guide. Another good book on voodoo, The Complete Book of Voodoo, Robert W. Pelton. Good. It's a good book on voodoo, A, B, C, D, F, G, oils, uh, you know, winning for dice, you know, uh, uh, babies, hella five babies in here. Um, I hope you guys already know what babies are. Love, Charms, and Spells by J, J, A, D, E is her name, Love, Charms, and Spells. Anything, any love charms, any very easy love charms, very easy love spells to do, you know what I mean? Um, you know, bullshit you could do, uh, like dissolve sugar in rose water, add three drops of your blood drawn from your ring finger, add almonds and cashews, make small cakes and feed it to your lover. If you that ill, if you that ill with it, go on and do it, go on and do it. Uh, uh, love drawing bath or love drawing powder, uh, ounce of sandalwood, tablespoon of basil, half a spoon of musk oil, quarter tablespoon of patchouli oil, quarter tablespoon of cinnamon, uh, one tablespoon of myrtle, uh, half a spoon, of, uh, half a tablespoon of jasmine oil, four ounces of talc, or that's, which is basically unscented baby powder. Uh, it says, while mixing the ingredients, you chant Venus, bring my true love straight to me. Cupid shoots your arrow, so he's not free, uh, so he does not flee. Eros, turn his love in my direction. Turn your uh, turn indifference to affection. Fill a red flannel bag with this mixture and carry it with you. So they'll tell you those little kind of things. Again, like you say, well, Pat, it, where do I get a half a teaspoon of musk oil, botanicas, um, jasmine oil, botanicas? And if you want to take it to the next level, you can get your herbs where I get my herbs, mountainroseherbs.com. You can get the herbs, jasmine. You infuse it with an oil. Um, I'll give you a book that you can get that shows you how to deal with the oils. That uh, book is called Helping Yourself with Magical Oils A to Z by Maria Solomon. 
He tells you how to get base oils. Basically, take the herb, put it in the sun to infuse the herb into the oil. So whatever herb you put in the oil, you will have that type of oil. MountainRoseHerbs.com is where you get the wholesale oil. Do not ask them for my herb pack ingredients. They will not get it to you. Love Charms and Spells by Jade. That's that book. Another good book is called The 21 Divisions, Dominican Voodoo by Carlos Antonio Montenegro. So Carlos Antonio Montenegro again. Carlos Montenegro. He has one called The 21 Divisions, Dominican Voodoo. Excellent to get into the Dominican shit and the saint shit. Another good book is called Papa Jim's Herbal Magic Workbook, How to Use Herbs for Magical Purpose, an A to Z guide. That's Papa Jim's. And I know we're coming up on this third hour, and if you have to interrupt me to do anything, we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to We have a few more books. Voodoo in Haiti by Alfred Mitrux. This is another good book. His last name is spelled M-E-T-R-A-U-X, Voodoo in Haiti, deep in the Haitian voodoo thing. Urban Voodoo, A Beginner's Guide to Afro-Caribbean Magic by Jason Black, Christopher S. Hyatt, Ph.D. Egyptian Magic by E. Wallace Budge. This is a pretty good book on the Egyptian symbols, how you can use them magically. Voodoo Charms and Talisman by Robert Pelton, another good one by him. Spirits of the Night, the Voodoo Gods of Haiti, uh, Sheldon Rodman and Carol Cleaver, another very good book on Voodoo. Reversible, Spells and Rituals, Carlos Antonio Montenegro, another good Montenegro book, How to Reverse Any Hexes, Any Spells That Were on You, Reversible, Spells Mm -hmm. and Rituals. So anything that was put on you or you felt was put on you, you can use to change the energy. Golden Secrets of Mystic Oils, over 550 oils, over 1,300 spells by Anna Riva. Um, Anna Riva also did a symbol book, so anything by Anna Riva, A-N-N-A-R-I-V-A, is how you spell her name. And she has a lot of botanica books. Uh, the Magic Candle by Charmaine Day, Facts and Fundamentals of Ritual Candle Burning. Charmaine Day is D-E-Y. This is how you spell her last name. Anything you ever needed to know about a candle, how to charge it, clean it, light it, anoint it, uh, types of candles is in this one little botanical book for less than $5 or around $5. Uh, Complete Guide to Creating Magical Entities, Creating Magical Entities by David Michael Cunningham. Excellent book on how to create entities and deities. And finally, well, almost finally, Egyptian Magic for Forbidden Secrets of Ancient Egypt by Joseph Toledo, T-O-L-D-A-N-O. So he goes through some of the Egyptian magic. It's a good, a lot of the symbols, words of power like Heku and all the rest of this stuff and how to use some of the Egyptian iconery in terms of reprogramming the subconscious mind, which is what magic is. Another good book I didn't bring down, Reginald Crosby, uh, Quantum Voodoo, uh, hmm. probably one of the most best books I read. That's a black man that wrote it, Quantum, yeah, it's called Quantum Voodoo. And he, he, since he's a scientist, he breaks down the quantum understanding with a lot of logic and brings it down to the everyday Haitian voodoo, uh, voodoo uh, ritual. So that's an, uh, another excellent book. And that's those, and this probably, there's probably more, but that's a good, those are the botanica uh, 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 culture of magic books. If you got those magic, they'll just give you spell after spell after spell after spell. You get the supplies from botanica. Like I said, go online and just look up botanica and see where one is near you. I do not know of a special one. And then there mm-hmm. are botanicas online. If you can't find one near you, then you might have to order some of this stuff online. And um, so we need to understand in terms of wrapping this up. Yes, yet another good one. We'll be back soon. Yeah. We need to do mm-hmm. questions and answers. If Aline's up for it, we'll do it next week. We do a whole straight q and I'm, I'm into it. If he's into it and he's there, or yeah, definitely the week after next. So, okay, so we ready to do a, new, a Q&A next week. First of all, all the radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. 
there's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.